orthopedics and an open biopsy is a major procedure which naturally has its own potential uh, complications and morbidity and open biopsy is usually performed after a negative result following the radiologist ct guided or cm guided uh, biopsy or in selected presumed tumors mainly affecting the posterior element of the spine the technique of a percutaneous uh, transpedicular spinal biopsy lesions has been shown to be a useful alternative to paraspinal biopsy for vertebral body lesions in the thoracic and lumbosacral spine the versatility of the efficacious uh, safe and cost effective technique is further enhanced by the possibility of using local anesthesia with cm or ct guidance materials and method the study was conducted on a minimum of 50 patients patients attending outpatient opd selective patients with symptomatic vertebral body lesion were taken for the study relevant history was taken and salient uh, clinical findings were noted in all the patients general examination with detailed clinical neurological and orthopedic examination were done to arrive for a professional clinical diagnosis all the patients were examined radiologically by x ray mri prior to the percutaneous biopsy before the procedure pre operative lab tests were obtained including cbc esr rbs blood urea nitrogen and coagulation profile all biopsies were performed in operating room using cm intensifier or guidance under local anesthesia or iv sedation transpedicular approach was preferred for percutaneous spine biopsy because in certain lesions it was difficult to assess the target with a paravertebral approach since the transverse process iliac crest or rib may obstruct the needle path all specimens underwent a histopathological cytopathological examination and specimens with strong clinical etiological suspicion of an infection were also sent for microbiological and cbnat studies technique the pedicle selected for the vertebral body depends upon the location of the uh, lesion on the vertebra within the vertebra a review of the patient's x ray ct or mri scan is mandatory a cm image intensifier is used for continuous monitoring during the procedure the patient is uh, placed in the prone position on the fluoroscopy table the chosen vertebral level is first visualized in the ap view in the ap view the cm is manipulated along the inclination of the pedicle until an end on view of the pedicle is obtained for cases done under local anesthesia the needle track is anesthetized using 1% lignocaine and the periosteum surrounding the pedicle and the area at the junction of the superior facet the guide wire is then positioned on the end on view of the pedicle and a stab incision is made the guide wire is then tapped gently gently with a mallet uh, through the pedicle into the intended area of the vertebral body the track of the guide pin is then uh, is kept within the margins of the pedicle the lateral view on the fluoroscopy ensures the correct anterior trajectory the guide wire is then uh, replaced with jamshedi needle and wire syringe specimen was taken mm-hmm. this is फ्लूड वॉज रिटेड In the remaining 8% cases, only soft tissue and hemorrhagic fluid could be retrieved. Fourth spine was the commonest encountered pathology. In 17%, biopsy uh, suggested inflammatory pathology. Overall, biopsy was positive in 44 cases, with accuracy of 88%. In the remaining six cases, the biopsy report was inconclusive. Biopsy sample was also sent for bacteriological studies whenever the uh, sample appeared to have infective material. In six cases, culture was positive for pyogenic pathology. while in three culture was positive for mycobacterium tuberculosis discussion biopsy of bone is restored to when histological and cytological or bacteriological uh, evidence of disease is required before appropriate treatment can be planned in skeletal pathology the radiological features are non specific and only a differential diagnosis can be given a combined approach utilizing the strength of the clinical radiological and pathological evidence together is the best way of reaching the correct diagnosis 27 males 23 females were affected which emphasizes that the fact that spinal pathology have no sex predilection it was observed that lumbar spine was commonest involved vertebral level followed by thoracic spine and then sacrum in 10% cases lesion was dorsal lumbar and in 4% uh, patient lesion was lumbosacral in rest 6% skip lesions were encountered 
in our study 94% of the lesions were osteolytic and 6% were mixed osteolytic lesions uh, osteolytic lesion 85% uh, okay fluoroscopic uh, fluoroscopic compared to open biopsy and computer guided uh, computer uh, to tomographic uh, directed percutaneous biopsy conclusion after completing this study we conclude that it is necessary to get a histopathological diagnosis before starting a definitive treatment percutaneous transpedicular spinal biopsy is technically easy can be done by an orthopedic surgeon does not require any sophisticated radiologically equipments radiological equipment and has less morbidity as compared to open biopsy of the spine it is cost effective and can be done as a day care procedure we suggest that all orthopedic surgeons dealing with spinal lesion in the clinical practice should be uh, should take up percutaneous transpedicular biopsy as the first line of investigation in all radiologically evident lesion of the spine before starting any definitive therapy thank you okay uh, dr pande yes sir, sir. Uh, definitely this is the time tested very good method for biopsy and you have mentioned as you have mentioned about the sensitivity of uh, this investigation but you didn't tell us about the specificity you don't have any data regarding this no so i don't have any data about specificity uh, did you did you get my point yes sir yes sir biopsy ki उससे ट्रांसपर्टिकुलर बायोप्सी में डायग्नोसिस हो गई ट्यूबरकुलर लेकिन बाद में पता चला सेकेंडरी है सो दैट इज वन ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग्स यू हैव टू लुक फॉर ओके सर यू हैव स्टार्टेड विद एंटी ट्यूबरकुलर ट्रीटमेंट एंड पेशेंट इज नॉट रिस्पॉन्ड और दिस इज द ओनली द स्टडी यू हैव टेकन द डाटा ओनली ड्यूरिंग द इन्वेस्टिगेशन ओनली यू डिडेंट फॉलो द केस दैट मे बी द रीजन इज इट so i i could not follow the cases because the covid came so i could not follow up all the patients okay because of that uh, but the specificity one of the important thing hai na yes, we should know okay, okay sir thank you sir good evening ashish sir mm, good evening good evening welcome ashish sir bravo president elect upa to address the second day of uh, upe pg con sir please इनिशियल वन आवर दैट वॉज आई वॉज इंगेज समेर सो इट्स अ वंडरफुल जॉब पीपुल आर डूइंग एंड अ वेरी टीडियस जॉब एज वेल whatever you are doing except for a few problems of uh, this connectivity everything is going well i think and uh, uh, just carry on and uh, for pgs it's a very good learning platform and the certificate we will provide will help them for mci recognition although this this year they have exempted uh, because of covid but anyway one should uh, have this certificate and uh, have some inclination towards research methodology and uh, so once again please carry on and don't disturb the thank schedule you. Right? thank you thank you shirish are you there yes sir uh, one point is you have not shown any clinical or uh, procedural photograph uh, although you said you have done uh, percutaneously yes, one sir. and you said that you can take a uh, percutaneous biopsy from any radiological lesion so is no, it no sir actually uh, we can take we, the uh, seriously take only if sir posterior uh, elements are involved then it is a then beneficial and then, then only we can do it otherwise if disc is involved then we have to go for uh, posterior central or other okay but uh, you mentioned in your conclusion this thing okay thank you ashish nice presentation thank you sir yeah. are you listening yeah. yes sir yes sir yeah you said that your uh, transpedicular biopsy is for the posterior lesion where it is for posterior lesion what about your role in the anterior body uh, anterior part of the vertebra or wahan se palatsi lene ke liye did you think about it 
chronic pain of the back and if the pain has not subsided like after or uh, 3 4 months of uh, treatment of like uh, antibiotics and uh, other med- medications for pain if the patient has got no relief then we can go for this approach uh, this modality so, of treatment uh, like we, we get an mri and the mri suggests it's an infective lesion most likely yes, tubercular so uh, we like to ask other people also who are uh, logged in So, is it wise to always go for a biopsy or uh, by just uh, the MRI and the clinical and the pathological picture? We can maybe give a trial of uh, ATP, and then if the patient is not responding, then we uh, go for a biopsy. Sure. Or, or the people suggest that straight away we go for a biopsy and then start treatment. What is the uh, opinion of the other people of the house also? Okay. Thank you very much, Shirish. Yes, sir. So now move on to our next uh, presenter, Doctor. Doctor Bridges, are you sitting in a room with another Zoom meeting open with somebody close to you? Is there a lot of echo from your end? अब थोड़ा दूर बैठ जाइए उनसे तो एको नहीं है. So Nikhil, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, Share yes. your screen and let's start your presentation. And be strict to your time. So good evening, everyone. Uh, my my presentation is with, on the minimal invasive endoscopic assisted reduction and percutaneous fixation of displaced acetabular fractures in an elderly patient i am nikhil punya pg jr3 from srms bareilly nikhil please share your slides okay sir Sir, is it okay. visible? Sir? Let's start. So myself Nikhil Punia, uh, PG two, so J R three S R M S Bareilly. I am going to present a case. Uh, so this uh, we have assisted a minimal invasive endoscopic assisted reduction and percutaneous screw fixation of a displaced as acetabular fractures in an elderly patient. So we have, we have a patient, a sixty year old male, presented to our emergency department uh, following an R T and. Uh, accordingly we have managed the patient in the emergency as per the atls protocol and pelvic radiograph shows the acetabular fracture based on the judex view and ct we have classified it as the anterior column with posterior hemitransverse fracture given the age of the patient and the fracture pattern uh, the surgical intervention uh, for the early rehabilitation was preferred so on the further investigation of the patient the patient was hyper uh, hypertensive and the and uncontrolled diabetes hb when she found to be 11% so instead of an open reduction and plating uh, which was uh, the plan we have opted for the percutaneous screw fixation however the this displays uh, the, in the excess we found that the displaced quadrilateral plate would, would not be uh, reduced by the close maneuver to allow the passage of the screws So we opted a novel method of an endoscopic assisted reduction of an quadrilateral plate, 
and a minimally invasive screw fixation to address the same. So in this, uh, the, the whole of the procedures take uh, around the two hours and with the minimal blood loss as the patient, so we could not uh, arrange the blood for the patient also. In this, we have taken the three separate incisions of one, in, one inch apart, two of them for the passage of the screws for anterior and the posterior column, and one for the insertion of the endoscope through which we have reduced the collateral plate also. So, and the patient was discharged on the next day with some anti-osteoporotic uh, treatment and not bed, not bed bearing for the six weeks. At the final follow-up six months, the patient was ambulatory without support with a heel scar and radiographing showing the union without any displacement of the implant. So this was the pre-op uh, radiograph on the AP view with the, uh, found that the anterior column with posterior hemitransfer type of a acetabular factor on the left side. So, so this uh, in the first image, so the, we have said so this is shown. So these are the, the patient lines for pine and the spinal anesthesia. So this uh, we have uh, we have made and the through a minimal pararectus approach we have made an uh, incision around two centimeter uh, for the endoscope to the grip and by incising uh, we have taken the ob oblique incision just, just above the medial to the mid inguinal point and pointing the fractures uh, pointing the fracture we have put in the the trocar for this and through the trocar we have inserted the an endoscope to be to visualize the uh, quadrilateral plate and by the uh, the, the bone impactor. So we have pushed uh, the fracture and these two, the lateral incisions for the one at the level of the GT, one at the level of the GT uh, for the uh, reduction in the traction with the shan spin. And this is the, for the posterior column. Uh, that is the, the lateral wall, the third window uh, in the elim vinyl approach for the posterior column. <laughs> so this is uh, from which wave the endoscope was inserted. So this is oh, this is the intraoperative uh, endoscopic images. So in this we can be visualized there's the corner motors, the pigastic vessels, and some here, somehow here we can find this the so quadrilateral plate. So this uh, these are the intro uh, CM guide uh, images. In this we have put in the anterior screw for the uh, anterior column screw. In this uh, the uh, operator view and in the iliac view we can see we have put in the three uh, screws. This, uh, this is for the posterior column, and this is uh, for the anterior column, and the low, lower wrist one was the magic screw for the quadrilateral plate. <clears throat> so though in the final, the postoperative x-ray, so this is uh, the anterior, the, the, the posterior column screw, and this one is for the anterior column, and this is the magic screw for the so quadrilateral plate. So these are the operator view, and it's the iliac view for the, uh, the postoperative view. So this is also another previously described technique in the literature for about the this, this is the three D laparoscopic assisted reduction for the percutaneous fixation of acetabular fractures, the McFerry. So in this, uh, so that this this uh, in this they use the, the they they take the help of the surgeon for the laparoscopy. But in our technique, so uh, we have uh, taken one of the orthopedician can only individually perform this. So the discussion, uh, so the use of endoscope to assist in the uh, fracture reduction and passage of the guide wire and the screw under vision eliminate any chances of malreduction and of screw malposition, making the use of percutaneous screw fixation technique an attractive option for the acetabular fracture in the elderly patient. Thank you, sir. So I am audible, sir. Yeah, nice. yeah, you are very much audible. Any questions? Which scope are you using? Sir, endoscope, sir. Uh, sir. The normal endoscope that we use for yeah. laparoscopy. Yeah. Doctor Nikhil. Yes. Doctor Gil here. You don't you have any follow-up for this case? You, you have presented no. only one case. You one case technique. We don't have any follow-up, sir. Uh, after that, COVID uh, was in the rice. We could not uh, collect the post of uh, the follow-up access. What is the conclusion without follow-up? And you should present your thesis here. No? Uh, you are a student, PG student? Yes, I am a PG student. Sir. What is your thesis? So my thesis was about the uh, distal radius with the external fixation with the gesture. 
instead of presenting your thesis you selected only one case without follow up this is platform the presentation of your thesis for pgs mostly i have okay. 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 okay i have given and also but by the thesis nikhil how many cases you have done sir so, this sir only we have done one cases till now okay and still you have not uh, mentioned that in which type of classification and which uh, cases in which you are using the scope so uh, in this uh, we can uh, if, so, if we, as per your presentation we can do this endoscope in all acetabular fractures so minimally displaced fractures okay you have not mentioned this. okay so nikhil it is a good attempt but this can't be taken as a full proof method as the only single case report is there yes sir so uh, we need to have more cases and basically the endoscopic assisted endoscope is helpful to check for the reduction you can look the quadrilateral pit but you didn't mention about the method of reduction Yes, sir. I have sir. In this, sir, we have uh, we have reduced the anterior and the posterior column mm -hmm. by the the by the by the shank spin from the GT for the anterior column and for the for the third third window of the ilium vinal approach. So we have reduced the uh, so the posterior column using the shank spin. Mm -hmm. okay. And the second thing, the length of the screw were uh, quite short. Yes, sir. So in the follow up, it is quite possible that they may. lose their reduction yes yeah, sir so, so that's why follow up is very important yes sir yes sir you have not given any follow up regime uh, yes sir so we could not uh, how long okay. you are keeping patient in bed when will you start to uh, taking or wait there so we have started the uh, so the to touch after 6 weeks for the 6 weeks so we have patient, uh, patient on the bed rest yes okay overall good attempt so thank you nikhil uh nikhil excuse me on yes, one sir. side you told that your motto was to early rehabilitation on yes. other hand you are saying that i kept the patient on bed rest for 6 weeks yeah sir but sir we uh, sir for the both the uh, things are controversial na this so for the sir open reduction and uh, internal fixation with the plate or some uh, so we can go for an early mobilization but sir since the we could not go for an open reduction as patient as for the wound healing the and we could not arrange blood for the patient so we could so we have uh, selected this uh, uh, for going the endoscopic so percutaneous fixation but sir the in percutaneous fixation or by the close method we could not uh, reduce the quadrilateral plate so we have introduced this endoscope method to reduce the quadrilateral plate basically sir so but for this technique sir we have to keep the patient for uh, in immobile for about 6 weeks so it is contrary to that thing that we have gone for the early mobilization but uh, for this and by this technique we have kept the patient uh, in mobile for 6 weeks okay thank you thank you very much nikhil so our next speaker is dr saurabh mittal saurabh are you here yes sir Let's share the screen and start the presentation. Yes, sir. Sure. Sir, is it visible? Now it is visible. Uh, sir. Uh, make it full screen yes sir a uh, topic for my uh, paper presentation is surgical reconstruction of acromial clavicular joint disruption procode type 3 a case report sir i am a junior resident a second year junior resident in uh, royal khand medical college and hospital bareilly 
रॉकवुड क्लासिफाइड एक्रोमियो क्लाविकुलर जॉइंट डिसलोकेशन इन टू ग्रेड वन टू सिक्स बेस्ड ऑन दी डायरेक्शन एंड अमाउंट ऑफ क्लाविकुलर डिस्प्लेसमेंट ग्रेड वन एंड टू लीजन आर जनरली थॉट टू बी बिगिन एंड कैन बी ट्रीटेड कंजर्वेटिवली देर इज ऑल्सो वाइड स्प्रेड अग्रीमेंट दैट क्लास फोर टू सिक्स इंजरीज should be operated on nonetheless the discussion over whether to uh, treat type 3 ac joint injuries with conservative or surgical treatment is still ongoing the incidence of complications varies depending on the desired surgical treatment for type 3 injuries and can sometimes result in a loss of shoulder function in contrast to that a uh, conservative management may result in an excellent and painless shoulder function however failures after conservative treatment still suffering from chronic instability and pain may require a surgical because of an inferior clinical outcome case a 38 year old male patient presented in opd with a complaint of inability to uh, lift heavy objects and pain on and off in right shoulder joint with uh, with alleged history of trauma to right shoulder due to fall from bike one month back patient was then managed outside conservatively with arm pouch sling and oral medications including anti inflammatory analgesics but not relieved and presented in rmgh for further management on physical examination deformity was present at ac junction and range of motion motion was uh, normal at shoulder joint but it was pain, uh, painful patient's blood investigations were within normal limits on radiological x rays suggestive of rockwood rock type 3 ac dislocation and hence planned for surgical reduction as open reduction and internal fixation with modified weaver done technique with distal clavicle resection and post op x ray and physiotherapy was required expected outcome was deformity correction reduction of ac disruption and strengthening of the shoulder joint after 3 months of follow up it was observed that patient started lifting weight with less effort and pain as earlier and is further further improving and strengthening the shoulder joint methodology a horizontal s shaped incision of approx 10 cm was given over right ac joint distal end of clavicle was freed from soft tissue around 1 cm of distal end of clavicle was resected two parallel tunnels uh, two tunnels parallel to each other were made in uh, clavicle extending from the lateral uh, extending from the lateral surface to the superior surface of the clavicle coraco acromial ligament was detached from acromion process the acromial end of the coraco acromial ligament was attached to the distal end of clavicle through the tunnels using ethebond suture double strengthening was achieved by hooking another ethebond suture from coracoid process to middle one third of clavicle these are the intraoperative pictures this is pre op and post op x rays this is the post op scar of the patient now discussion the optimum treat, uh, treatment for acute ac dislocation is still a joint point of contention the best outcome may only be achieved if the ac joint is repaired anatomically as accurately as possible according to the proponents of operational treatment this is because following conservative treatment the remaining dislocation may cause prolonged discomfort these concerns are countered by the good results that have been recorded in recent years after a uh, conservative management these authors noted that while conservative treatment can yield equivalent results it does not expose the patient to the hazards associated with surgery in their meta analysis of the matter philips et al eventually advocated against surgical treatment the absence of utilization of the rockwood classification of ac joint injuries in terms of selective criteria is a key shortcoming in the ongoing topic of ac dislocation treatment even of if all of the injuries in issue are classed as toxic type 3 the informative value of the results of a study on this topic is uh, significantly re reduced if several types of rockwood injuries are included in the comparative as a result we discussed uh, solely on rockwood type 3 injuries although it is possible to evaluate different surgical approaches it should be uh noted that when using meta analysis to compare surgical tre uh, treatment to conservative treatment conclusion must be stated with caution the stated uh, results the concept the benefits and the downsides of 
various surgical methods differ significantly as a result things should not be thro thrown together at random the need for a second procedure to remove the implant may be considered a disadvantage when compared to surgical techniques using polydioxinone bands for augmentation and reduction the formation of stiff scar tissue is required for the healing of injured coraguclavicular ligaments because this is the most important aspect a lack of mechanical stability in the coraguclavicular ligaments will result in long term discomfort regardless of treatment although it is known from the literature that a complete anatomic reduction is not required for restoring normal shoulder function the degree of displacement in type 3 ac joint dislocation does not appear to have a significant imp impact on the end outcome Conclusion, although 100% anatomical reduction is very difficult to achieve, despite of which patient is relieved of symptoms and deformity is corrected, especially in females for cosmetic reasons. There are almost zero chances of development of arthritis at AC joint. To manage Rockwood type 3 uh, acromioclavicular joint dislocation, modified Weaverton procedure accompanied with physiotherapy is a good option. These are my references. Thank you. Dr. Saurabh. Yes, sir. Nice presentation. How Thank many cases you have taken? Sir, uh, as it is a case report, I have taken only uh, one case. Okay. So yes, what rehabilitation you follow on this patient? Sir, uh, we started a mobile... Uh, with pendulum exercise and so, so then slowly we started with a range of motion exercises after how many weeks sir after uh, three weeks we started okay yes sir till then we gave the uh, patient shoulder immobilizer okay did you use fiber tape or only no sir uh, we used uh, ethibond suture sir Okay. Because generally, if you if you use only ethibon, there are more chances of cut through. So it's better to add on with a fiber tape also. Okay, sir. Uh, Doctor Saurabh. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, what are, what is the indication of surgery in this patient? Sir, uh, indication was uh, as he was a laborer, so he had to he had to lift uh, heavy objects, and uh, he was suffering with pain at the uh, shoulder joint while moving his shoulder joint. So, uh, okay, thank you. Uh, how much range you have achieved after the, uh, your surgery? Sir, uh, range we have achieved, uh, sir, 100% uh, and it was painless. Okay. But with some precautions to uh, not to lift very heavy objects. Overhead, uh, ab uh, basically overhead abduction with, with heavy objects. Okay. And the moments were hundred percent recovered. Yes. yes, sir. Okay. He was able to hundred percent movement before surgery also, sir, but it, they were painful. How long follow up you have, sir? Uh, six months. Six months. Uh, it's a very long time for a laborer to uh, give up from the his job for six months. You have told that he's a laborer by occupation. Yes, sir. Okay. Dr. Saurav? Yes, sir. Uh, as you clearly mentioned, the main cause of surgery was uh, pain. Na? Yes, sir. Uh, so basically, the pain arises from the articular disc and it is better to excite the disc. Uh, so, he will be relieved from the pain. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, now I'm inviting the next speaker, Dr. Nishant. Dr. Nishant, are you there? Yes, Dr. Nishant. Dr. Sushant. Dr. Shushant, last speaker of the session. Uh, 
So I think all are over. No one is there. Should we now, end the session? Maybe? Yes, sir. It was a very uh, informative session. Uh, we had three speakers. Uh, excuse me, sir. Certainly, sir, sir. his mic is off. Okay. Can you hear me? Sir, can you hear me? Yes, sir. He has just turned on his mic. Sir, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you. Oh, my apologies, sir. Uh, yeah, so, okay. Share your slide. Now, let me share my screen. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, there is an option of share screen. Yes, sir. I'm clicking on that, but it is not. Uh, sir, I'm clicking on that actually. Uh, open your presentation and then click on share. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. I. Sir, I just sent a request. Uh, Hello. Ha, sir, can you hear? Me? Sir. Yeah. Sir, please give me one minute. I'll just. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, we are waiting. Waiting. Sir. But we are able to see you, Dr. Shant. In the meantime, uh, Dr. Parav, can you shed some light on this common injury of PCG dislocation? Sorry, sir. Yeah. Parav, can you? Yeah, 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 yeah. The practical management of this type three dislocations. As a uh, uh, the speaker, Dr. Saurabh, uh, you very nicely described the the procedure. Yes, uh, sir. For this chronic uh, dislocation, chronic by chronic we generally mean that it is more than four weeks old. Yes, sir. So any, any AC joint injury which is uh, more than four weeks old we classify it as chronic. And for those patients, it is uh, basically we have to first uh, uh, listen to the complaint and history that. Uh, what is the presenting complaint of the patient? Most of the patients, they do well, even despite very severe deformities with AC joints. And we just need to uh, give them some uh, physiotherapy and uh, they do well. But for patients who are uh, heavy, like heavy manual laborers, who yes. need to lift weight, we need to offer them some surgical. And I, I find this modified we were done procedure the best. Some people are now doing arthroscopic yes. reconstruction of CC ligaments. Yes, sir. Uh, with the uh, with or without a graft, but uh, the, for me, this work, this procedure, I've done a few, and they have they have shown good results with almost near normal movements. Yes, sir. Thank you, Gaurav. Are you ready now? No. Okay, Mr. There are other methods to treat that also, sir, but uh, there are more chances of arthritis in other procedures like using CCS screw or uh, K-wire. Pe some people use K-wire to fix it, but there are chances of uh, developing arthritis. Then, sir, uh, people use hook plate to uh, fix it. Yeah, one thing I wanted to ask regarding the first talk, I think that question of mine went unnoticed. How many of us are actually uh, doing uh, spinal biopsies before starting treatment on any uh, lesions of the spine? Dr. Gaurav? Yes, sir. Huh. Actually, sir, we are doing routinely this procedure. And uh, in our routine practice, we don't start even ATT before because uh, Initially, uh, we have started this project around 99, 2000. Uh, but uh, the number of, as, we, as I was asking the candidate, that there was a lot of false uh, positive cases. So it is better to go first for the uh, transpedicular biopsy and then start ATT. Yeah. Uh, 
and, and particularly in present scenario, we are having lot of cases of uh, resistance in tubercular. So we send the sample for the CV net along with that. Yeah, because there was a recent so, case of mine. He was uh, he was uh, diagnosed yeah, with MRI as spot spine, and I started ATT. And uh, once I uh, 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 gave him this four drug uh, regimen, two months when I switched to three drug regimen, he started showing the symptoms again. So I got a biopsy done, and he had this uh, resumption resistance. So I was wondering whether to uh, advise every patient biopsy and then start treatment. I think this is a better idea. No, sir, you are you are absolutely right, sir. Because initially, uh, our this article was published around two thousand one or two thousand two in IGO also, and uh, then there was a lot of cases. Then we follow the same regime in the future also. Doctor Nishant. Dr. Nishan, please unmute and if you possible to share your slides. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, sir, actually, uh, Dr. Nishan's computer is not uh, working. <laughs> he'll he'll uh, present it from uh, my computer. So, is it okay? No problem. Yeah. Sure, sir. Hi, it's okay. Okay, uh, we've got some more time till Nishant uh, prepares. Dr. Dr. Gill, can we hear you? Dr. Simrat Gill? Anybody else who wants to make any comment? Doctor, uh, if I can, if I can ask. Okay, I think yes. Okay, okay, can fine. you see your screen? Ah, yeah. uh, sure. Yes, you can yes, start. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, I'm going to relax. Okay. 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 Relax. Take your time. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Very cool. My apologies, first of all. Uh, 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 sir, uh, the computer got hanged. I don't know how. No problem. No. In the last moment. Uh, but nevertheless, sir, uh, please accept my apology. And uh, can I begin my sure, uh, sure. presentation? Okay, sir. Sir, um, I am Dr. Nishant. I'm a okay, DOT well. and uh, doing my MS now as a final year resident. Uh, so I'm presenting a validation of a Hindi version of Indian modification of Japanese orthopedic association score for cervical myelopathy or radiculopathy. And it's a cross section study. My guides are Dr. Varun, Dr. Praveen, and Dr. Somashi Kaparappa, sir. Sir, basically, uh, the translation of patient reported outcomes directly affect the patient's care as already established in literature. Modified Japanese Orthopedic Association score, popularly known as MJO, is currently used worldwide for assessment of cervical malapathy. Certain religious practices require sitting cross-legged, getting up from sitting position, and squatting are very inherent in our activity of daily living or integral to our faith in regions or in Southeast Asia, Middle East, or South Asian countries. Eating practices like tearing a chapati or roti or scooping the rice from, from the plate or all the are not methods, moving, I think. Unlike use of chopsticks or spoons. Native translation assists surgeons to objectively use this in the chosen language groups in different countries. Dr. Nishan, your slides are not moving. Oh, slide is not Just click slide. on the slides individually or make it full screen. Yes, sir. Go back, back. 
they're not moving right i think you're seeing the full screen but we are not seeing them so keep it sir don't keep it in powerpoint mode okay sir so the, uh, can you see it now we can see yeah they are moving now go ahead okay. Okay, okay, sir. So, uh, native translation assists surgeons to objectively use this in the chosen language in group, uh, language groups in different countries. Our main aim of our study was to validate the Hindi version of the Indian modification of MJO uh, in the in the speaking population, which was very specific uh, for Hindi speaking with CSM or radical pathi. So, objectives were several. So, one of the objective was to translate the English okay, version, okay, which was given by yeah. So, one of our objective was to translate. the english version which was given by river river panna from cmc vellore and we modified that version into the hindi version so and we uh, also uh, back, uh, did the back translation we did the equivalence of the questionnaire we had uh, other objectives were to look at acceptability reliability we did a pirate study as well sir we did a test and retest stability of the study and we did a validity of the study both divergent current and uh, uh, other uh, validity valid, uh, validity uh, scores as well so we also measured the response the cultural adaptation and uh, motor uh, dysfunction upper and lower extremity sensory dysfunction of upper, upper extremity and sensory dysfunction so method was a cross section study cervical myelopathy or any patient with neck pain or radiculopathy were the inclusion criteria we minimum we had to take a 190 sample size uh, and the reason for that was to uh, 10 is to 1 responded ratio so get a excellent outcome so we had 993 patients and it was conducted in department of orthopedic rohit khand medical college bareilly from november 2022 to september 2021 so informed consent was the inclusion criteria and diagnosis of myelopathy or radiculopathy as established by spine surgeon or primary investigator using his to physical examination or radiological criteria that is a kims criteria so the the but the, the person had to be trained in spine to actually make that diagnosis so adult as per who class reading this is the new criteria we took uh, from the who website and which is actually 19 years exclusion criteria any patient who had previous spine surgery history of spinal trauma or any external injury sir this is the gulin method of translation so the original instrument was taken and then it went to series of uh, uh, translation so the by the primary investigator spine surgeon and the professional bilingual translator so first version was taken the next version was back translated by two native english speakers with uh, uh, without uh, with medical background so second meeting actually was the reviewed by all of us and we made a final version of it and that final version was finally tested in the stage 2 so we did a pilot study on 90 healthy individuals of the hindi version the third stage was basically by the patient filling questionnaire stage the three evaluators we did the both english and the hindi version and we correlated with the numeric scale the fourth stage was statistical analysis so basically we are strongly looking Uh, at the construct validity most importantly concurrent and discriminant validity uh, to establish any questionnaire anyway so internal consistency reproducibility acceptability and other reliability factors were very important so this was my thesis topic sir and um, just to mention so this is the basically this is the uh, uh, mjo score now this mjo score is not the benzel uh, mjo score this is the river panna mjo score from cmc bellore what modification actually what he has done is in the upper limb extremity one so what upper extremity uh, what beautiful thing he has done is which is uh, missed by both by benzel and also the japanese was that he took the if he has a disability in the hand but uh, to button a shirt it requires a lot of uh, uh, trick movements and complex movements of the hand so river panna was uh, smart enough to figure this out and he included this factor in the uh, as a grade 2 score so uh, from the disability zero means was the disability six means the best uh, function the lower extremity also river panna was uh, uh, he actually focused on the regional uh, characteristics uh, characteristics or uh, let's say religious you know sometime a religion requires to squat and pray and things like that and river panna very smartly included the fourth factor which was getting up from a squatting or cross leg position so uh, that actually tells us a lot about disability and uh, he came up with a score in uh, english version we have actually modified this entire score uh, into hindi version as i pointed to earlier and sensory disability he kept same as benzel or uh, fukoi and other japanese uh, uh, scores and uh, sphincter dysfunction as well 
सर दिस वॉज द हिंदी ट्रांसलेशन वे डिड सर लेट मी जस्ट गिव स्मॉल एग्जाम्पल सर जैसे ग्रेड uh, टू है अगर अपर एक्सट्रीमिटी में तो कमीज का बटन लगाने में असमर्थ था किंतु चम्मच से खाने में समर्थ था तो आदमी चम्मच से खा सकता है लेकिन अगर वो बटन नहीं लगा पा रहा है तो इसका मतलब वो बहुत ज्यादा डिसेबल है तो ये ये इंपॉर्टेंट था और ठीक उसी तरह जैसे बिना सहाय के चल पाना किंतु बैठे हुए आदमी को उठ उठ पाना में असमर्थता हो तो ये सब चीजें ये हमारा हॉलमार्क था पूरी स्टडी का सर ऑब्जर्वेशन में 193 पार्टिसिपेंट्स थे मेनली जो एज ग्रुप था वो मेजॉरिटी वाज इन बिटवीन 36 टू 45 एंड नेक्स्ट वाज 26 टू 35 सो रिलेटिवली यंग वेरी फ्यू इन द ओल्ड एज ग्रुप सो वी टुक अ डायग्नोसिस फाइनल डायग्नोसिस हमने देखा और एजुकेशन लेवल देखा सो फाइनल डायग्नोसिस में सर्वाइकल मेलोपैथी का 193 में वाज ओनली वन पेशेंट एंड डिस्क वाज ओनली वन एंड रेस्ट ऑल वेयर लाइक स्पॉन्डिलाइसिस स्पॉन्डिलोसिस और स्पॉन्डिलाइटिस पेशेंट नाउ एजुकेशन लेवल वी हैड huge number which was illiterate so what what one small modification we did was we uh, kept a very trained nurse so the surgeon did not interfere with the questionnaire so a trained nurse would uh, translate that to the patient and then uh, would uh, score it uh, for that that was done uh, uh, for the patient uh, but those who are uh, literate and they could read they filled the questionnaire by themselves now what we looked at the questionnaire the mgo score both english and hindi version one week apart because we know uh, that in one week the disease process will not change very radically and that was the entire uh, crux of the matter so we wanted the score to be same so if we prove that the score was same we could establish all the parameters so as you can see in the graph sir the mgo score did not change much after one week and uh, and this, and, and we also record the time because we want to see how responsive the the score was so uh, uh, obviously the patient had to read the questionnaire so there was not much different very slight difference uh, between the, the hindi and the english version and when the patient had to score uh, obviously the patient took little time because you know, they have to those who could read and write or we had to translate to them uh, so uh, we looked at the all the these variables sir as you can see upper limb score lower limb sensory upper and lower the uh, sorry upper limb uh, dis, uh, bowel and bladder dysfunction etc you can see that there was no difference so that actually proved that the disease process did not change and the patients could actually read uh, the questionnaire very well and it was a questionnaire cum score as well it, it turned out to be uh, sir all the parameters so we uh, since uh, uh, because we had a very few severe cases we had only one myelopathic case in the entire covid time and we had uh, one this case sir unfortunately uh, we had to run a man witney score so man witney non parametric way we could actually just see whether uh, there was any difference uh, in the in the time to fill the questionnaire or modified nuric scale how how it responded one to two weeks because modified nuric was clinician based so we compared with the mjoa so these were the results and uh, it was uh, significant only for the time to fill the questionnaire so uh, ref rest is remain the same sir this these were the this graph clearly shows the lower limb not much difference sphincter dysfunction uh, sensory upper limb sir and uh, we did our tapa uh, statistics to see the inter uh, co uh, co correlation and uh, it uh, had a very good correlation compared to literature by various studies which i'll be showing in my discussion so reproducibility we uh, proved that uh, the english version was also by river panna and same civil lower was reproducible sir and also the hindi version was reproducible that was another hallmark of the study so uh, let me uh, take you through the different studies that been done sir the, the first score actually came in 1971 when the japanese orthopedic society came up with the score uh, so they had a set of question this was a vague set of question unfortunately not validated hirabashi was the first japanese who actually tra translated it and then proposed a score so benzel uh, in 1991 of the for neurosurgeon from united states was the first english version that came in the literature and what we have been so far been followed all over the world globally uh, uh, in 94 uh, japanese orthopedic society uh, they were using it for elbow score shoulder elbow score so they came, they had to also come up with a, uh, a little modification which i'll talk about it in next one uh, so jain was the first who actually did it in india unfortunately he is not uh, provided the details of the score in the paper he never showed the score how it was translated or anything like that so they didn't had any clinical significance so fukui was the first one from the jo uh, japanese orthopedic society who actually came up and he divided into four parts so first his uh, attempt was to prove the reliability which he did in 2007 next 
वो कोई स्टैब्लिश द रिलायबिलिटी विच कुड नॉट बी स्टैब्लिड इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट सो ही डिड इन द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ इस क्वेश्चन एयर एंड देन ही डिड द थर्ड पार्ट विद गुड क्लिनिकल को रिलेशन एंड फोर्थ पार्ट ही डिड विद एक्सलेंट रिलायबिलिटी बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली इट वॉज नॉट वैलिडेटेड so and so the validation came with bartel bartel was the first who actually validated the score sir uh, for the the, the geo score and had a wonderful correlation sir uh, then then once he validated it the uh, bartel the good thing was he came up with mild moderate and severe this grading which is currently being filed all over the world now uh, once he validated that everybody came with the chinese came up with the first version 2014 agosto and portuguese version 2014 2015 revapanna very uh, fantastically he classified for the indian population or southeast asian regions um, pertaining to our culture uh, uh, this thing and the longo was the italian version and cheng was the Hong Kong Chinese version, and ours is the next version available in the world literature. So we are the uh, first uh, Hindi version to uh, to, uh, bo, uh, to uh, establish this uh, MGO score. Now the biggest strength of our study was we were able to establish all the psychometric properties. Every scale could be pro, uh, uh, could be a uh, uh, system. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, um, Uh, statistically proven uh, my apologies so uh, the but the, there is a limitation that you know it was a single center study sir and uh, not with wide severity of the disease didn't we didn't had many uh, severe cervical malopathy patients but rebapanna in his original article has clearly proven that the english version has a excellent uh, 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 correlation both between mild moderate and severe and had a good predictability to who should be operated who should not be operated sir so the goals achieved we started the construct validity which is the most important target of any uh, 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 patient report a score so we established the clinical and concurrent validity we use the modified neuris scale Dishan, as the time is running out please conclude yes, he also uh, established the discriminant validity reproducibility and reproducibility and acceptability and comprehensibility in to conclude eating habits with hand is a very unique to our culture sir and virab panna was the first person from vallor to establish this and we modified in hindi our hindi version is a excellent functional validity tool for csm of pre stage of cervical spondylosis which is actually a pre stage of cervical malopathy we highly recommend patient reported outcomes in the local language of the regional language for the patient reported to be actually reported thank you very much for your time and thanks for uh, bearing with me sir uh, and apologies for all the inconvenience caused thank you thank you nishant nice, nice presentation. presentation thank you sir now we are running short of time we have to start, start session 2 mm, i want to thank all the chairpersons and moderator uh, for being on time and thank you gorav sir shakun sir dr pulkesh and our respected chairperson uh, dr anil dr bk gupta sir dr sanjay kumar and dr sps gill sir thank you thank, thank you, you so much thank you thank you thank you sir thank you now we are going to start our second session all to So our chairpersons, Dr. Saurabh Agrawal. Welcome, Saurabh. Dr. Paras and Dr. Rakesh Tripathi, sir. And the moderator for second session is Dr. Dharmin, Dr. Ravi Kant Rohela, and Dr. Heman Chahar. so i'm inviting the first speaker of the session to dr shrikant are you there dr shrikant hello yeah dr shrikant yes sir i am here sir yeah please share your slide and ready with your presentation yes sir
हेलो हेलो यस एम आई ऑडिबल या यू आर ऑडिबल गुड इवनिंग रिस्पेक्टेड टीचर्स माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर श्रीकांत सी योर स्लाइड यस सर वी आर नॉट एबल टू सी योर स्लाइड सर स्टिल नॉट विजिबल वेट नॉट विजिबल नॉट विजिबल बेटा तो सेकेंड स्पीकर डॉक्टर वैभव हेलो 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 आर यू ऑनलाइन यस प्रेजेंटेशन यस सर यस स्टार्ट एंड डॉक्टर श्रीकांत बी रेडी आफ्टर दिस ओके सर यस स्टार्ट विद योर प्रेजेंटेशन डॉक्टर वैभव यस सर सर इज माय स्क्रीन बीइंग शेयर्ड yeah okay sir thank you sir a very warm welcome to all the respected faculty members i dr vaibhav dholia i'm here to present uh, my topic of comparative prospective analysis of intraarticular fracture of the proximal tibia managed by joshi's external stabilizing system versus plate fixation this study was conducted in our gsv medical college kanpur हेलो डॉक्टर श्रीकांत शेयर योर स्लाइड आफ्टर डॉक्टर वैभव ओके सर सो ओके सर माय अपॉलॉजी सर मिनिमाइज योर स्लाइड डॉक्टर वैभव हेलो या डॉक्टर वैभव प्लीज कंटिन्यू सर माय स्क्रीन इज या विजिबल योर स्क्रीन इज विजिबल प्लीज कंटिन्यू so the fractures around the knee joint uh, that is a weight bearing one these are of very importance there is not in a significant morbidity and deterioration in the quality of life uh, the treatment of upper tibial fractures with intraarticular extension has become a challenge for the orthopedic surgeons we can see that the intraarticular fractures uh, which is are the tibia plateau fracture they are about 1% of all the fractures and about 8% of the fractures in the elderly population they usually result from a axial loading force combined with some varus and angulation forces uh the study was a prospective comparative study conducted in the department of orthopedics of gsvm medical college kanpur we studied total of 33 patients of the intraarticular fracture of proximal tibia and they were followed for a minimum period of 6 months at regular intervals of the 33 patient 23 were managed by uh, plate fixation and 10 patients were managed by just fixation on the ar arrival of the patient in the casualty or the outpatient department after after the primary management uh, we uh, managed it by the knee aspiration and then applying the back slab or the calcaneal pelt traction and the bowler brown splint and then we categorized the fracture according to one of the six type of the schadger classification the type 1 is the lateral plateau split fracture type 2 is the lateral plateau split depression fracture type 3 is the lateral plateau central depression fracture type 4 is the medial plateau fracture type 5 is the bicondylar fracture and type 6 was the fracture in which the there was a metaphyseal diaphyseal dis uh, dissociation the metaphysis region and the diaphysis region uh, that does not uh, directly communicate with the articular surface the patients included in our study were all the acute proximal tibia fractures of less than 3 weeks duration of either sex uh, and they were of less than grade 3b according to the gustelo anderson classification and uh, they must have an intact uh, neurovascular status the patients included were of uh, skeletally mature at 10 years above age and uh, having uh, giving consent for the intervention and willing to come for regular follow up we excluded those patients which had fractures of more than 3 week duration 
or of uh, poor vascular status in uh, according to the Gustavo Anderson grade 3C or the patient's unfit for surgery or having certain type of pathological fracture. So this is an overview of uh, what uh, we how we manage the patient on uh, uh, the AP view and the uh, lateral view of the X-ray knee. We had a, also a detailed clinical evaluation about uh, seeing any complications like the, uh, the important complication like the compartment syndrome showing the signs of blistering and pain on passive stretch. These had to be managed immediately. Uh, the detailed radiological evaluation was done by using the uh, 3D CT evaluation and then we proceeded to some definitive management in form of external fixation if the soft tissue coverage was good um, or poor depending on that we did the external fixation or the internal fixation. The implant selection was based on the type of fracture, the skin condition and the surgeon's preference and of course the financial condition of the patient since they belong to low socioeconomic status. The uh, static quadriceps exercises were started on the third day post-operatively and partial weight bearing was started at uh, 12 to 14 weeks. We started full weight bearing only at the signs of clinical or radiological union. At regular follow-ups, the patient were clinically assessed by the modified Rasmussen score for the functional assessment at regular intervals uh, for a minimum period of six months. Thus, uh, there were six uh, points included in the Rasmussen score. The pain evaluation, the walking capacity of the patient, knee extension, the total range of motion, the stability and the power of quadriceps. The total maximum score uh, was 30. Patients having score more than 28 uh, were um, graded as excellent and of less than score 20 were graded as poor score. This is an uh, overview master chart of our study. Uh, the majority of the patients in our study, uh, they were found out to having to have a road traffic accident as the major mode of injury, and they were usually of uh, two wheeler cases. Um, the mean age was around 35 years of age. This can be explained as in this age group, the activities of livelihood, the job opportunity and vehicular mobility, they predispose them to have high energy vehicular accidents. In our study, we found that males were affected more, about 87% in comparison to the females. The reason could be that uh, males in the Indian scenario, they are usually the earning member of the family and they uh, had to travel more. So there were increasing ch chances of accidents among them. The right leg was involved more compar in, in comparison to the Fractures. On a regular follow-up, uh, the mean functional knee score by the modified Rasmussen criteria for just fixation was 22.5 and for plate fixation was 24.08. Uh, uh, talking about the complication, the major problem which we faced during our study was about uh, of the knee stiffness in three cases due to prolonged immobilization. Um, there were two cases of uh, pin tract infection in just fixation and uh, two cases of surgical site infection, out of which one uh, led to wound dissens. Uh, there was uh, one case of uh, neuropraxic nerve injury also, but that recovered in subsequent follow-up. So, uh, to conclude, uh, in just fixation, we found that there was a less risk of soft tissue complication. Uh, it is an effective method in treating uh, low-grade interarticular fractures by closed means and uh, helps in the early mobilization of the joint. So the chances of knee stiffness, uh, which is a major issue to be addressed, they, the chances are less in the just fixation. In the plate fixation, the articular congruity was maintained better because the fracture was openly visualized and the open reduction and finally better functional outcome was seen in most of the interarticular fracture. Though there were some soft tissue and neurovascular complications, but in our study, we found that the overall final outcome score was better in the plate fixation method. Thank you. Okay, nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Dr. Vaibhav, any questions?
so we are moving on to the our first speak, speaker dr shrikant shrikant please share your slide yes sir yes yes sir is it visible sir yeah it is visible start your presentation yes sir good evening respected teachers myself dr shrikant my topic is study of prevalence and risk factors of deep vein thrombosis in traumatic lower limb fractures हेलो 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 कंटिन्यू कंटिन्यू आई योर ऑडिबल सर माय रिगार्ड्स गोज टू माय मेंटर चीफ मेंटर डॉक्टर चंदन कुमार and my hod dr ak gupta sir here i am introducing deep vein thrombosis deep vein thrombosis means thrombus in the deep vein system of our leg dvt it itself is not dangerous but the situation becomes life threatening when a piece of thrombus breaks off and travels downstream through the heart into the pulmonary <laughs> circulatory system and becomes lodged in the lung which could be life threatening hence early diagnosis and treatment of dvt is required problems of dvt Deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism common causes yeah, of common causes of morbidity and mortality after orthopedic surgery. In general, surgical patients without profile profile axis against DVT prevalence was found to be thirty percent, and associated fatality risk was one percent. DVT in the lower extremity is also common in traumatic patients, and prevalence was found to be nine point one percent to eleven percent. Risk factors for deep vein thrombosis. The incidence of deep vein thrombosis correlates with the multifactorial risk and complex pathogenesis, such as age, sex, fracture sites, and waiting period before the surgery. Major surgeries, especially major orthopedic surgery, hip orthoplasty, knee orthoplasty, hip fracture surgery, conquer the greatest risk of DVT. Additional risk factors increasing the incidence of DVT has been also found out. Just For example, hypertension, obesity, immobility. Moreover, prolonged operation more than two hours, a prolonged immobility, and large body mass index are the significant factors. Why the need for a study? In the depth analysis of risk factors in perioperative DVT patients, it may help to diagnose and prevent the disease from progressing any further. DVT with lower limb trauma in Indian patients, by authentic as well as practical approach, is needed to plan a such generalized management of DVT and its catastrophe. That's why the our aim of the our study is to calculate the prevalence prevalence of DVT in lower limb traumatic fractures and analysis of risk factors for DVT. Here the inclusion criteria was patients admitted with pelvis and lower limb traumatic fractures, regardless of getting treated operatively or non-operatively. And exclusion criteria was open grade three fractures, pathological fractures, patients who are not willing to give consent in the participate in the study. Patient with prior history of DVT or bleeding disorders. <clears throat> methodology, methodology. The following risk factors were analyzed in all the patients: fracture site, injury severity score, GFR, sex, obesity, hypertension. And following additional risk factors were analyzed in the patients who were treated operatively: time from injury to operation and duration from operation. And <clears throat> examination of the patient was done. Complete general examination was. Done to see the swelling and tenderness over the calf, compartment syndrome, any blistering, open fractures. <clears throat> Materials was all the patients were subjected to color Doppler study of the involved limb after admission and after surgery or after two weeks. And patients in whom initial color Doppler was and patients in whom initial color Doppler study was revealed the presence of DVT were not repeated. Criteria for positive scan for DVT was non-compressibility, presence of intraluminal defect, and absent or non-phasic Doppler signal, lack of respiratory variation above the knee segment, and inadequate uh, inadequate augmentation. Here, the classification of DVT was divided on the basis of location. It was divided as proximally when the thrombus was found in proximal to the pleural vein, 
and it was divided into distal DBT when it was found to be distal to the pupillated vein. Observation was done here. <coughs> did to be had taken 200 patients with the lower limb traumatic structures. A serial color doppler was performed in the lower limb extremities of the patient after surgery for DBT evaluation and independent risk factor was <coughs> factor were analyzed using logistic regression. And here the data was collected and the prevalence was found to be 4%. And correlation of fracture site was found higher for the tibia fibular or plateau fracture that was 44%. And second was the hip fractures that is neck of femur. Here the correlation, here the correlation of risk factors with the TBT was found to be significant for the time from injury to operation and for injury severity score. That is P value was found to be 0.05 less than 0.05 and prevalence of dbt was seen result prevalence of dbt was seen in 4% patients a risk factor such as time from injury to operation and injury severity score was found to be significant we found that prolonged time from injury to operation and greater injury severity score could be high risk factor for the development of deep vein thrombosis so the take home message is that orthopedists should be evaluate the injury severity score and accordingly try to reduce the time from injury to operation. And also every patient of lower limb trauma must undergo serial curler doctor examination to avoid catastrophe of deep vein thrombosis. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Okay. I think Ankit is not connected. So our next speaker after Ankit is Akshat Pandey. Dr. Akshat. Yes, sir. Uh, please share your slide. Sir, is my slide visible? Yes, visible. Now it's visible. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. And it's audible and you start your start with your presentation. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone, to all the respected jury and faculty members. Uh, uh, my topic is a functional and radiological outcome of uncemented total hip arthroplasty in various hip disorders. As we all know that THR is one of the most successful and cost-effective surgical procedures with the primary goals of pain relief and re uh, restoration of function. It is the most popular and most common adult reconstructive hip procedures done nowadays. To do a THR, uh, pain must be refractive to all the conservative measures. Um, THR is uh, uh, the most common condition for which THR is done is severe osteoarthritis of the hip, which accounts for 70% of the cases. Uh, now my topic is uncemented total hip arthroplasty, and it was developed in response to the evidence that cement debris plays a very important role in promoting bone lysis and bone loosening. And thus, to uh, cover up for this uh, problem of uh, stem loosening, uh, Various press fit, porous coated, and hydroxy uptight coated stems and cups have been investigated as a way to eliminate the use of cement and use bone ingrowth and on growth as a means of achieving durable skeletal fixation. 
uh, aims and objectives uh, it was a follow up study of the clinical course of uh, total hypertrophy in various disorders and to study the efficacy of total hypertrophy by clinical scoring system that is the modified harris hip score and radiological assessment in the post operative period and to study the pitfall of total hypertrophy in various hip disorders uh, now this study was conducted in our college and the patients operated from january 2017 were followed prospectively and followed uh, after 2019 were followed up prospectively and the, the inclusion criteria was patients between 18 to 65 years of age which were diagnosed with various hip pathologies like avian osteoarthritis both primary and secondary fracture neck of femur inflammatory arthritis ankylosing spondylitis etc were included in our study and the exclusion criteria was the patients that were unwilling to consent for surgery patients that were medically unfit for surgery or if there was any primary tumor that rapidly destroyed the bone any neuropathic joint or active neurological disease or any uh, patient with a active focus of infection various uncemented stems and uh, shells were used for and uh, estabular components were used in our study and uh, usually spinal anesthesia was used and epidural top up was given posterior approach was used in all our cases at our center which involves splitting gluteus maximus at various levels uh, this is how the surgery was performed uh, hip joint was exposed and after proper dissection the femoral head was extracted and the estabulum was prepared by reaming it at 45 degrees of uh, abduction and 15 degrees of antiversion and after uh, reaming then femoral a femur was prepared uh, with proper rasps and reaming till a tight fit rasp was obtained and then the femoral stem was in inserted and reduction was checked uh, then patients uh, in the post operative uh, period the patients were observed uh, for the first 24 hours by vital monitoring um abduction pillow was applied to all the patients iv antibiotics were given for 3 to 4 days uh, analgesia in the form of epidural analgesia or with combination with nsaids was given drain was removed when the total collection was less than 50 ml in 24 hours a mobilization was done as per surgeon's preference either on the second post operative day or after stitch out or after a month and uh, uh, patients were evaluated according to modified harris hip score uh, which has four parameters pain function which is assessed in terms of gait and activities deformity and range of motion Uh, pre-operative and scores at the latest follow-up were included in our study. However, they were followed up at regular intervals also. Then the radiograph was also taken at the end of the procedure. Uh, AP and lateral views were taken, and uh, parameters such as uh, acetabular alignment, femoral components uh, were assessed, and any uh, complication like periprosthetic factors, loosening, osteolysis, etc., were noted down. And all heterotrophic ossification was seen. Uh, now the results. Uh, total 52 patients were included in our study, and 58 uh, hips were operated. of 52 patients six patients underwent bilateral thr the most common site for which the operation was done was left side 50% cases accounted for left side of the surgery and 20 for the right side of surgery uh, the mean age that came out to be in our study was 39.4 years however the age ranged from 18 to 65 years uh, 73% males and 27% females were included in our study the main indication that was uh, found in our study was avian of the hip which was followed by secondary arthritis and infectious or osteoarthritis which counted for 14% of the cases and ankylosing spondylitis counted for 12% of the cases two cases uh, each of primary osteoarthritis and inflammatory arthritis were also seen and one case each of fracture neck of femur and abc of proximal femur was seen the minimum follow up duration was 2 months and the maximum was 56 months and the mean uh, uh, duration of follow up was 21 months the mean pre op harris hip score was 31 and the mean post op harris hip score was 94.5 which yielded excellent results and different parameters also they were uh, they improved post operatively and the p value came out to be less than uh, 0.001 uh, uh, only three patients had a lengthening of 1 cm and four patients had a 1 cm shortening post surgery and rest all of the patients had no limb length discrepancy the average acetabular angle came out to be 41 degrees uh, with the minimum being 37 and the maximum being 45 and the acetabular coverage was good in all the patients uh, combined antiversion was used uh, the femoral component was in neutral alignment in 45 hips and in uh, three hips it was in varus and in four hips it was uh, four hips it was in varus and three it was in valgus alignment and there was no significant uh, difference in the results most of the patients were mobilized early with weight bearing commencing on the second post operative day 34 patients were mobilized on the second post operative day four patients were mobilized after stitch out on day 15 and 14 patients were mobilized after one month uh, on first follow up uh, and no significant femoral component subsidence was seen with early post operative weight bearing hence it was found to be safe Uh, before uh, thr none of the patients could perform squatting or cross leg sitting however after the surgery 37 patients that is 72% of them could perform cross leg sitting and 22 patients that is 43% patients could perform squatting uh, now talking of complications the most common complication that uh, uh, was found in our study was heterotopic ossification and anterior thigh pain anterior thigh pain was initial uh, for 1 to 2 months which subsided with further follow ups 
uh, nerve injury which was very transient was seen in only one patient which recovered in two weeks one case of deep, deep infection was seen in our study uh, and the later the same patient presented with periprostatic fractures no case of dbt was seen a uh, proximal femoral fracture was seen in two patients in one patient it was dealt with ss wire circulage and in one patient it was left alone uh, for example this is a case of a 27 year old male uh, who was presented with avian of left hip and he was operated and post surgery he performed both quatting and cross leg sitting in conclusion we can say that the functional and neurological outcome of uncemented thr is determined by various factors which includes the most important point is selection of patients uh, with proper operative technique and placement of implants design of components and post op rehabilitation it is mainly advocated in young patients and if we use it in old patients they should have an adequate bone stock yeah, okay. hence careful patient selection in both pre and pre operative evaluation is very essential yes, advantages uh, our study suggests that the current generation of implants provide a excellent radiological outcome after an intermediate duration of follow up after 3 to 4 months everyone yielded a score of more than 90 and uh, cementless implants they allow early post operative weight bearing hence they aid the process of rehabilitation and plus there is also an advantage that complications like hypostatic pneumonia disease osteoporosis bed sores uh, and dvt they are uh, substantially reduced uh, plus there is no femoral component subsidence seen with early post op weight bearing hence it is safe now considering the Ind indian scenario where activities which uh, are of our cultural background like squatting cross leg sitting kneeling which are very important in different religions and cultures you know, patients they could pursue these activities and uh, overall it was not free of complications but the rate of complication was very less in our study um thank you so much everyone pata nahi uska time tak login nahi kiya tha humne pone aap chhe pe login kiye okay humne tum logo ko message kiya very common topic but a good presentation by akshat and uh, i think first of all webhub and galaxy a31 please mute your mics webhub and galaxy a31 Please mute your mic. So one query is there, Akshat. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In your study, age is thirty-nine years. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Don't you think it's too low? Uh, sir, but thirty-nine uh... years age, hip replacement, that too a mean age. uh sir actually the patients uh, the most common indication in our surgery was pain our main aim is uh, we uh, provide a painless hip with rehabilitation of function if a patient at a very low age he uh, presents with uh, complications where we cannot provide any other treatment and the pain is refractory refractory to any other conservative measures so i think uh, uh, doing a thr is better because ultimately as doctors our main aim is to uh, provide good quality of life to our patients You were right, but thirty-nine uh, years mean age in a study. How many patients you have taken? Uh, sir, I have taken fifty-two patients, and fifty-six hips were operated. Okay. So, any questions? He will work from eighteen years. He will from will work from eighteen years. Yes, sir. So mean from so the patient who thirty. Uh, hello, sir. Hello. हाँ, yes, patient is taking treatment and who you can complete total replacement. What was this? Sir, I cannot hear you. Sorry, sir. Please, uh, 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 it's not audible, sir. What was that? The indication is the eighteen years old male because the range was from eighteen years to sixty-five yes, years sir. in your yes, study. Sir. So, yes, sir. Hello. 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 Or if you are not audible clearly. What was the age of the? What was the diagnosis of the patient in the eighteen years old patient in the which you perform you perform the surgery? Hello, sir. I sir, I cannot hear you, sir. Hello. Akshat, uh, uh, Saurabh is asking about the diagnosis of that 18 years old patient on sir, whom was, you performed tear charan cemented. Sir, it was uh, juvenile uh, idiopathic immunoarthropathy, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. 
Okay. You have your answer, Saurabh? Okay, okay, sir. Okay. Any yeah. other questions? Yeah, can I come in? I'm joining you from UK. Is that okay to come in? Who is there? I'm Mr. Sedi calling you from UK. I've joined it. So I got a Zoom invitation, so I'm here. Is it okay to ask a question? Yeah. Yes, sir. You are free yeah, to ask. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, actually, it's a nice talk. Uh, one or two things I want to talk about, you know. Uh, was there any DVT prophylaxis given to any patients, any of your patients? Uh, no, sir. We did not give any routine DVT prophylaxis to any of our patients. But why so? I mean, I don't know, because we normally, if we don't give, it's found to be negligent. Uh, maybe it's a different thing at your place. Uh, so we uh, focus more on early post-operative mobilization and rehabilitation. And uh, yeah, I was going to come that as well. I mean, it's good that you should mobilize at the same day if possible, not yes, normally possible. Definitely yes, second day. But in your talk, you mentioned some of your patients walked around 15 days after 15 days. Yes, sir. But we uh, passive exercises and passive physiotherapy was started in such patients. So uh, uh, passive exercises and passive physiotherapy, passive cuticle was ex uh, started in such patients. And uh, so there was no uh, problem with uh, dealing with those patients. No, I, I don't think that's the wrong way of doing it, I would say. I mean, uh, I would encourage to mobilize early. That's number one. You know, you should mobilize early if you are happy with your procedure. So I don't think there's a reason for 15 days. In one of your patients, or about 30 days. So I would encourage, unless and until you are a bit concerned that you have created a fracture of your rastabulum or something has gone wrong in the procedure, you should avoid, you, and that is a different thing. Uh, uh, but also, you also mentioned in your covering statement that because if it's, it's an uncemented, you can mobilize earlier than cemented. It's a wrong way. It's the other way around. Yes, sir. Cemented uh, replacements, you can walk as soon as possible. If you go back in the past, uncemented used to be partial weight bearing for six weeks and then full weight bearing. But now people we'll... mobilize full weight bearing because the implants have become so good. So I think it will be wrong to say that the uncemented, you can mobilize earlier than cemented. No, sir. I didn't mean it the uh, didn't mean it the other way around. I just meant okay. to say that we can mobilize uncemented also from uh, the very next. Okay. Good. Good. Yes. Good, yeah. Yes. Sir. And in inflammatory arthropathy, there were two cases. Uh, you did uncemented. Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. I mean, was there? I mean, like, uh, were you okay with that? But generally, some people. I'm not saying you've done wrong. It's, everything is, is absolutely right. But generally, people tend to do. Because of inflammatory, they tend to put a cemented ones. Rheumatoids, anywhere where there's a bit of a problem with the bone, uh, you know, uh, morphology, like rheumatoids, they tend prefer to put cemented rather than cemented because the success is higher. There's less loss of your cup failing if it's a rheumatoid patient. So, so. but I would definitely advise, you know, it's good to mobilize early. Don't put them for 15 days. It's not good. Why are you? In, why did you differ in some patients mobilize early and in others 15 days? Uh, so actually, it was according to our uh, surgeon's preference. Some uh, uh, preferred to mobilize the patient early and uh, some preferred to mobilize it after a few days. Sir. But yeah. passive exercises were started from the very next day, uh, from the very same day in all the patients. Okay. Yeah. Yes, but I, I think it's it's important, if possible, I mean, it's circumstances are different for every place, you know, it would be advisable to uh, mobilize them sooner than later. Because yes, they sir. all minimize Akshay. the risk of DVT and so on. Yes, sir. Akshay, what was your uh, average time for surgery? So the average time uh, of surgery ranged from 16 because minutes. Your, your post of follow-up and DVT profile access, or it also depends on the Average time of surgery? So it was usually 60 to 70 minutes, sir. Ah, it's a pretty good time. Uh, yes, uh, one more uh, more thing uh, that Dr. Govind mentioned that you have uh, done two cases of uh, inflammatory diseases with that uh, uncemented, right? Yes, sir. Uh, what was the age? Uh, sir, in so sometimes uh, age 
this is a very uh, important factor yes sir it must be uh, of, they must be of uh, uh, young age yes sir yes sir okay yes, sir. any other questions Thank you, Akshat. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for. So our next uh, speaker is Moham, Doctor Mohammad Aziz. So Aziz, you are there. Doctor Aziz. Doctor Aziz. डॉक्टर मोहम्मद हादी अजीज डॉक्टर शुभम अग्रवाल आर यू देयर डॉक्टर शुभम हेलो यस सर यस सर आई एम देयर ओके मेन टाइम शुभम यू स्टार्ट योर प्रेजेंटेशन ओके सर थैंक यू सर share your slide and start your presentation uh, is it visible sir no still, no now it's visible uh shall i start yeah yeah start, start. okay uh so good evening to all uh myself dr shom agarwal presenting my topic dynamic hip screw versus cannulated cancellous screw fixation for osteosynthesis of femoral neck fractures in adults uh, it's a competitive study uh, my thesis guide is professor latif jafar jilani sir uh, uh coming on to introduction femoral neck fractures account for nearly half of all hip fractures with vast majority occurring in elderly patients after simple falls 3 to 10% of these fractures occur in younger adults for young adults with good bone quality preservation of natural hip anatomy and mechanics is a priority as their high functional demands uh, young age preclude their candidacy for replacement procedures for internal fixation most orthopedic surgeons choose either cannulated cancellous screws or a dynamic hip screw or a combination of both allowing fracture fragments to slide along the implant while being axially loaded my aims and objectives were to compare the results of fixation of femoral neck fractures by dynamic hip screw with anti rotation screw and multiple cannulated cancellous screws in terms of union date varus collapse femoral neck shortening screw back out non union avascular necrosis and my second aim is to compare the functional outcomes of the two fixation techniques according to harris hip score uh, my metal methods were uh, my source of data is uh, our study was a randomized prospective study study duration was from december 2019 to december 2021 uh, in this study 19 patients were included nine uh, were fixed with dynamic hip screw and 10 with cannulated cancellous screws minimum follow up of each patient is 6 months uh, patients were divided into two groups by simple randomization using artificial intelligence based quick calceps into two groups a uh, group a uh, patients were uh, internally fixed with the dynamic hip screw with anti rotation screw and in group b cannulated cancellous screws were used my inclusion criteria were patient with fracture neck femur of is 18 to 55 years fresh fracture neck of femur less than 3 weeks old anatomical classification type subcapital and transcervical exclusion criteria were concomitant ipsilateral femoral shaft fractures anatomical classification type basi cervical pathological fracture or pathology in the affective hip joint on preop x-ray patient unable to walk before surgery uh, follow up assessment at each follow up clinical radiological fracture healing was assessed clinical assessment was done by harris hip score radiological assessment was done in parameters namely union varus collapse femoral neck shortening screw back out patients were followed up regularly in opd at 6 weeks interval till union then 3 monthly uh observations and results of my uh, follow up uh, time in uh, both group uh, was similar uh, uh, in dynamic screw it was 13.4 months and in cannulated cancellous screw group it was 13.6 a uh, union time uh, was also similar in both groups uh, uh, there was no significant difference uh, 
uh, in uh, operative time uh, it mean operative time in dynamic hip screw group was 80.6 minutes and in cannulated cancellous screw group was 72.8 p value was not significant uh, in terms of intraoperative blood loss uh, uh, it was significantly lesser in patients uh, uh, fixation done with cannulated cancellous screws uh, whereas collapse uh, was uh, more in cannulated cancellous screw group, but it was non-significant. Femoral neck shortening and screw back out was significantly lesser in patients fixed with dynamic hip screw with anti-rotation screw. Harris hip score was significantly better uh, in dynamic hip screw group uh, compared to cannulated cancellous screw group. Uh, in terms of non-union, there was no significant difference in both groups. Coming on to discussion, uh, the findings of this study indicate that dynamic hip screw or anti-rotation screw is a more relevant treatment method for femoral neck fractures compared to cannulated cancellous screws with more favorable functional outcomes and less femoral neck shortening. However, there was no statistically significant difference between two groups in terms of union time and non-union. No cases of avascular necrosis are seen in our study. Uh, these are some of the other st similar studies with which I have compared my study. These are the demographics of different studies. A uh, mean age uh, was uh, similar in almost all of these studies. Uh, Follow-up time is uh, somewhat lesser in our study compared to others. Uh, in terms of uh, union, there was no significant difference found in both groups in our study. Only one study showed uh, union better in dynamic hip screw group. Uh, in terms of uh, union time, there was no significant uh, difference in both of the groups in our study. Uh, in terms of uh, operative time, uh, there was no significant difference in our study, but some of these studies have shown that uh, cannulated cancellous screw group patients were ne needed uh, less operative time. Uh, in terms of intraoperative blood loss, uh, there was uh, significantly lesser blood loss in cannulated cancellous groups group and other studies have also shown this. Uh, in femoral neck shortening, uh, uh, femoral neck shortening was significantly less in dynamic hip screw group compared to cannulated cancellous screw group. It is also shown in uh, some other studies also. Uh, in uh, terms of Harris hip score, our study showed dynamic hip screw uh, Harris hip is supposed to be significantly better and uh, some other studies have also supported it. Uh, in terms of non-union, there was no significant difference in our study and no case of avian were seen. Uh, come, uh, limitations of the study. Uh, sa sample size was small and relatively short follow-up period. Uh, coming on to conclusion, in conclusion, the findings of this study indicate that dynamic hip screw or anti-rotation screw is a more relevant method, uh, treatment method for femoral neck fractures compared to cannulated cancellous screw with more favorable functional outcomes and less femoral neck shortening, but more intraoperative blood loss. These are some of my cases. Uh, First is uh, immediate post-op X-ray, uh, and uh, second one is uh, follow-up X-ray at 17 months. Patient was having Harris hip score was excellent. There uh, is no virus collapse seen, uh, but the femoral neck shortening was there. Uh, in my second case, uh, this is final follow-up post-op X-ray at seven months. Harris hip score of patient was good. There was no virus collapse, and femoral neck shortening was also not significant. Uh, this is my Third case, uh, this is final follow-up X-ray at 19 months. Here, non-union was present. Harris hip score of patient was poor. Uh, this is my case of fixed with cannulated cancellous screw. This is final follow-up X-ray at 23 months. Uh, Harris hip score of a patient was excellent. There was no virus collapse and femoral neck shortening was not significant. Uh, here uh, we can see uh, the, there is virus collapse uh, absent, but there is significant femoral neck shortening. And uh, in this uh, patient, non-union was present. Uh, the, and this is one case here. Is, we can see there is a significant femoral neck shortening and uh, virus collapse is also there. These are some of my cases, uh, references and thank you.
sir. Any suggestions, sir? Questions? I mean, um, it's a very good paper. I mean, a good number of cases. But how did you try to quantify which patient to do calculated screws, and which patient did you choose to do? Sir, we have done sir, uh, we, we have done randomization using okay. uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Yeah. Okay, all right. So it wasn't the age criteria. It wasn't like that. that no, sir, no, sir. Did you look into also the type of fracture, Pavel's, you know, uh, angle, which did better as compared to Pavel 1, Pavel 2, Pavel 3? Did you evaluate that or probably you didn't? It was just totally randomized. Sir, it was totally, sir, randomized, sir. Okay, all right. Good. Thank you. Yes, thanks. <coughs> Hello, uh, sir, your voice is not audible, sir. Are you talking to me? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I think uh, uh, Raja sir is trying to say something, but uh, he is not audible, sir. I am audible or not? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Okay. So you have in, you have included subcapital and trans cervical yes. fracture yes, and excluded basic cervical. cervical. Yes, sir. Okay. So one question is there: How you have stopped rotation of distal fragment during, especially during uh, uh, triple reaming? Sir, we have used anti-rotation screw. Anti-rotation uh, screw guide wire was there during triple trimming, sir. Okay. Uh, and uh, you have not mentioned that uh, subcapital, yes. in which case you have, uh, you did this subcapital, uh, you did this uh, CC screw and uh, in which case you would... Uh, sir, sir, it is case. totally randomized, sir. Because it's very difficult to treat subcapital fracture with DHS and anti-rotation screw. Is it? Yes, sir, it's there, but sir, uh, we have uh, done sir, uh, randomization sir, uh, using app, sir. So Any there... subcapital case in which you have uh, done this DHS and anti-rotation screw? Uh, yes, sir, it was uh, there, but I think uh, I have not... Uh... No. Sir, this is, is sir, this one. I have seen sir, your all seven cases. Sir, it is there, sir. No. One more thing. Yes, sir. You have followed up these cases for six months. Sir, minimum follow up is six months, sir. Okay. And so uh, you said there is no case of avascular necrosis. Yes, sir. So in six months, despite you are getting union. Yes, sir. You can't comment clearly on yes, avascular sir. necrosis. Actually, sir, most of the cases are more than 12 months follow-up, sir. Okay, but you have mentioned you have followed up six months. So mi minimum follow-up for patient is six months, sir. Oh, okay. okay. Yes, sir. Any other questions? And, and also, you know, to get uh, avascular necrosis, you might have to wait up to two years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So sir. sometimes what you can get is a, what's called the local sector necrosis, Local sector necrosis at the tip of your implant occasionally. The fracture may have unite, they may have a local, but I think you have to wait up to two years to be very happy saying that there was no AVN. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, one more thing. Although yes. uh, commonly 19 cases are quite sufficient, but your topic is so common. So regarding sir, uh, sir cases, cases, sir cases might uh, go higher, but due to COVID pandemic, sir, uh, sir, actually in our setup, sir, neck of femur is mainly done in routine OT, and sir, routine OTs were closed for a longer time. Yeah, Shubham, your setup is very good, and your guide is very good. Your department, your chairman is very good because I am the pass out of that particular college and department. Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. But, sir, the... Dr. Sadiq Saab was my uh, guide. Uh, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you, Shubham. Sir. Good presentation. Thanks, so, uh, next speaker, Mohammad Aziz, are you there? Yes, sir. I am there, sir. Okay, Aziz, start your uh, presentation. 
Okay. So very good evening to all. I am Muhammad Hadi Aziz. I am going to present my research work on diagnostic and therapeutic ankle arthroscopy, a clinical study. And my guide is Professor Naya Rasif sir. Uh, coming to the introduction, arthroscopy of the ankle joint is being done for both diagnostic and therapeutic reasons. Uh, the diagnostic indications include unexplained pain, swelling, stiffness, instability, heme arthrosis, and locking. Uh, osteochondral defects and impingement are the common therapeutic indications for ankle arthroscopy. Uh, besides these, ankle arthroscopy has a role in the management of injuries of the articular cartilage and soft tissues. Uh, my inclusion criteria were uh, patients presenting with unexplained effusion, bony impingement, ligament impingement, cartilage lesions, painful or strigonum, chronic ankle pain, which is non-specific and poorly localized, uh, biopsy of intra-articular soft tissues, uh, synovectomy for anterolateral impingement, uh, loose body removal, arthrofibrosis and unexplained pain. Uh, patients ex excluded from my studies were uh, patients with localized soft tissue infection, a severe degenerative joint disease, and a significantly reduced joint space uh, where introduction of the scope is difficult. Uh, coming to the material and methods, nine patients with median age of 40 years, ranging from 20 to 65 years, with a complaint of chronic ankle pain were studied and diagnostic arthroscopy with debridement and biopsy was done in all patients uh, from November 2019 to May 2021. Uh, American Orthopedic Foot and Ankle Society score and Foot and Ankle Disability score and visual analog scale was used uh, to assess the patient preoperatively and at subsequent follow-up. All the patients underwent extensive preoperative evaluation uh, which included history taking, physical examination, and radiological examination. Uh, the aims and objectives of my study were uh, to study chronic ankle pain, to uh, evaluate the result of any intervention, and uh, functional outcome after ankle arthroscopy, and the complications of ankle arthroscopy. <clears throat> uh, coming to the need for a study, arthroscopy is an important diagnostic and therapeutic tool for the management of disorders of the joint. Uh, ankle arthroscopy can be useful in treating a variety of uh, intraarticular disorders uh, which may be caused by trauma or by degenerative or inflammatory conditions. Now, compared with open arthrotomy, arthroscopy has the potential to shorten recovery times, reduce hospital stay, and minimize joint stiffness and limit surgical morbidity. Uh, uh, coming to the observations and results of my study, uh, six patients were male and three of the patients were female. Uh, uh, the mean age of the patients in the male group was 46.17 years and in females it was 28.33 years. Uh, uh, most of the patients had pain in their left ankle. Uh, the overall mean VAS score was uh, at the initial follow uh, at the initial period where it was seven and it improved to a about 2.53, mean 2.53 in about six months. And the overall AOFS score improved from an initial value of 58.11 to a value of 96 in about six months. Uh, in preoperative period, uh, three of the patients were in the fair category and six of the patients were in the poor category of AOFS grading. And at final follow-up, two of the patients were in excellent category and Four patients were in good category and three patients were in poor category of AOFS score grading. The FADI score incre increased from an initial value of 46.8 to a value of 93.5 in about six months. Uh, the biopsy findings in five of the patients, it came out to be non-specific inflammation. In two of the patients, it was diagnosed as tuberculosis ankle. And one of the patient, it was diagnosed as ganglion cyst. And in one another patient, it was diagnosed as synovial chondromatosis. A significant improvement in all the scores were found in my study. Uh, it was checked by non-parametric test, related samples, Wilcoxon sign rank test. And uh, in 
all the three uh, scores the p value was less than 0.05 uh, coming to the discussion uh, these are the various other studies in which arthroscopic debridement was done uh, for a variety of ankle pathologies like post traumatic ankle impingement osteoarthritis tuberculosis or uh, rheumatoid arthritis uh, my study is comparable to all the other studies and the scores are also comparable to all the other studies the limitations in my studies was the average follow up of my study was less due to covid 19 pandemic which may not be enough to determine the uh, functional improvement and the sample size of my study was small and these are few of the case exhibits uh, this was a patient who presented with chronic ankle pain following injury to his left ankle uh, six months back uh, this is the pre op x ray and this is the arthroscopic finding it is showing the lateral gutter uh, which shows scar tissue and synovial hypertrophy and this is the on, on the right far lateral side far right side of the slide is it is the lateral gutter after the debridement uh, this is another patient in <clears throat> in who presented with a pain in his left ankle and in spite of anti tubercular therapy for 3 months the pain was not improvement on ankle arthroscopy it was found that uh, the medial gutter shows synovial hypertrophy and this which was debridement which was debrided and this is the final picture after debridement of the medial gutter on the below it is showing that ankle arthroscopy uh, on on the below it is showing ankle joint with synovial hypertrophy which was debrided and the patient uh, the sample was sent for biopsy the biopsy report came out to be granulomatous inflammation suggestive of tuberculosis thank you thank you ajit yes sir so any question regarding this paper it's a nice paper yeah one thing in one patient you mentioned there was a chronic ankle pain what did the biopsy come in that chronic ankle pain sir the biopsy came out to be non specific inflammation yeah. but yeah. during arthroscopy uh, it was found that there was synovial hypertrophy which was debrided sir yeah i think there are it's very commonly seen in people <laughs> who are active sportsmen when yes, you sir. get something like that you know while you're doing an arthroscopy when you squeeze the inferior tibia fibula try to bring it your fingers and thumb closer you will see it delivers itself into the joint and you did the right thing you know you have taken it off but it is usually uh, with the sportsman people in which there is uh, uh, very likely the cause of impingement and you have taken it off and that the patient will get better so it was a non specific yes, inflammation yes sir that's right thank you Thank you, Ajit. It's a good paper. So our last speaker of this session is Dr. Ankit. Although he was not there previously, but now he is there. So Ankit, are you there? Yes, sir. Good evening, Please sir. Please start your presentation. Share your screen. You are very much audible, and do it fast. Please be be on time. Fast. Good evening. Good evening, sir. my presentation topic is comparative history of functional outcome management of fracture proximal humerus in adults by different modalities and sir in fracture of the proximal humerus comprise nearly 4% of all fractures and 26% of fractures of humerus there are commonest fractures in elderly population which ranks the third and first and second being hip and distal radius fracture proximal humerus involves head greater tuberosity lesser tuberosity and proximal 1/4 of the shaft mostly common in a elderly patient due to osteoporosis and less frequently in young adults due to high energy trauma usually high energy trauma associated with dislocation these fractures challenge the treating orthopedician because of its osteoporotic quality in the elderly people and the deforming forces of the muscles attached most of the proximal humerus fracture in younger as well as in the elderly patients are stable and slightly or non displaced can be treated non operatively these comprise nearly 80% of proximal humerus fracture 
The rest of 20% requires surgical fixation, either because they need better shoulder mobility or because of their fracture is more severe. And uh, in this paper, we have uh, taken needs classification, which has been variably adapted by multiple authors. The classification consists of four major groupings based on the number of displaced parts. One part, one part fracture, fracture lines involves one to four parts, and two part fracture, fracture line involves two to four parts, and one part is displaced that is more than one centimeter, more than 45 degrees. And three part fracture, a fracture lines involve three to four, three to four parts, two parts are displaced, that is more than one centimeter, more than 45 degrees. And in four part fracture, fracture line involves more than four parts, three parts are displaced, that is one centimeter, more than 45 degrees with respect to the fourth. My aims and objectives of this study was to compare the functional outcome of different methods of management in proximal humerus fracture, to evaluate the advantage, disadvantage, and complication on different methods mentioned in the study and to compare the results among the cast, plating, and external fixators just in terms of hospital stay, early mobilization, regaining normal range of movement, functional outcome, cost factor, and complications, if any. And this was this is a prospective study to be conducted from uh, number 2019 to number 2021 in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery, GSBM Medical College, Kanpur. It is a prospective study which includes 40, 42 patients of which 26 were treated by philosophy plating, two patients with external fixation just, and 14 were managed conservatively. And patient will taken into a study which came to OPD and emergency department of orthopedic department and uh, needs two part and three part proximal Hello, Patients were included in this in this study and treatment modality was randomized. My inclusion criteria was all intra and extra articular fractures of proximal and humerus, skeletally mature patients, closed fractures with intact neurovascular status, and those who have consent and billing to come for every follow-up. And my exclusion criteria was a skeletally immature patient associated head injury, fractures with associated neurovascular injuries, pathological fractures, and open fractures, four part fracture of the proximal humerus. The assessment of the patient was done by DAS scoring. The minimum follow up was six months and maximum 18 months in both conservative and operative. DAS scoring was done at one month, fo one month follow up, three months, six months, and nine months, and 18 months. In conservative management, immediate immobilization was done using a shoulder arm pouch with immobilizer. Physiotherapy in the form of gentle passive range of motion and pendulum exercises. It started after three to four weeks. In floss splitting and external fixation, patients were encouraged to begin active mobilization of the involved extremity from post of day one. Physical therapy was started immediately, beginning with the pendulum exercise, progressing to unrestricted range of motion by six to seven weeks after fracture fixation. In our study, the mean age of patient was 48.54 years, and we found that 22 cases were male and 20 cases were female. The mean duration of trauma to surgery was four days. We found that 18 cases out of 42 cases, road traffic accident was observed with the main cause of proximal humerus fracture. In our study, we found that left side is more involved as compared to right side. And in our study, we found that 14 cases were treated conservatively, 26 were treated by philosophy and 22 cases were treated by just fixation. In philosophy group, 26 cases, we found that on the basis of DASH scoring, a double follow-up, excellent results were seen in zero cases, good results were seen in zero cases, fair results in 19 cases and poor results in seven cases. In conservative group, we found that on the basis of DASH scoring a table follow, excellent results were seen in zero cases, and good results were seen in 11 cases, fair results were seen in three cases and poor results in one case. We observed that in floss plating group, mean DASH score at one month was 66.31 plus point. At three months, it was 65.72. At nine months, 65.30. And at latest follow, it was 31.19. We observed that the difference in mean DASH score was not significant at one month, three months to six months follow with the P value of more than 0 0.05. We observed that in conservative group, mean DASH score at one month was 61, at three months was 49, and six months was 38. At nine months, it was 26.3, and at latest follow-up was 15. We also observed that in difference in the mean DASH score was highly significant in one month, three months, six months, nine months, and latest follow-up, with p-value less than 0.001. In our study, we found post-operative infection in one case of loss group, which was managed by wound department, second closer intravenous antibiotics, and in external fixation group, one case develops pin track infection, which was managed by pin track dressing and intravenous antibiotics. In this study, we found the shoulder stiffness in two cases of which was which one was managed by philosophy and the other by conservative method. Now come to conclusion. Conservative treatment suggests that reasonable functional results can be achieved with immobilization alone without the morbidity associated with the operative management. Our results was better functional outcome in conservative management as compared to operative management. Our study had some limitations. Firstly, we had to include the patients of wide age group, so no attempt had been made when we should compare the results between the young patients and other older patients. Secondly, selection of treatment was independent of needs classification of proximal humerus fracture. 
थैंक यू सर कैन यू हेयर मी यस सर yes uh, my question is uh, that whenever you are comparing any study of the proximal humerus you should uh, exclude the pre existing uh, shoulder pain it is very important yes sir it can it can uh, uh, modify your results okay yes sir so shoulder pathology with the cervical spine pain refer pain and the other uh, pathology of the shoulder you should always exclude the pre existing shoulder pain yes sir i think this is a excellent paper you know i think very inf good information being passed to the people that you know conservative management of the shoulder still is the treatment of choice don't rush for surgery don't put some fancy implant just for fracture to reduce anatomically but uh, conservative gives very good results well done ankit yes sir uh You have mentioned that you are study is on uh, different treatment modalities. Yes, sir. And uh, you have uh, included forty two patient probably, out of which twenty six philos plating, fourteen yes, conservative, and only two jes. Yes, sir. So number of cases uh, other than uh, uh, philos is too low. yes sir first second one query is there uh, most of the time when you are treating these fractures conservatively you need to keep the limb in little bit abduction yes sir so how you manage that because you put that you have did uh, you have uh, applied a uh, brace on yes sir so how you manage that abduction okay it's all right overall uh, you did very well so with this paper we ends our second session and sincerely thanking our chair person dr saurabh dr paras dr rakesh tripathi and our moderators dr dharmin dr ravi kant roela and dr heman cha thank you thank sir thank you very thank much you. gentlemen thank you sir so now we are going to start our third session as sir. the last session of this epg con so i am inviting our chair persons dr najmul huda a very <laughs> dear friend of mine from amu dr pawan pradhan sir good evening and good evening sir and dr ashok yadav sir and our moderator for this session is dr nayar asif sir yes sir i am present sir sir, sir. good yes, evening sir brijesh here good, good evening good evening brijesh i can see you yes sir and uh, uh, dr amit sharaf and the third moderator is dr kartik pruthi i welcome all of you thank you so, uh, kartik are you there dr amit sharaf okay okay uh so we start with our first presentation dr priyank pratap priyank yes, are you sir. ready yes sir okay priyank share your screen and start your presentation dr priyank pratap from kgmc thank you sir so is it visible sir ah it's visible better thank you sir a very good, good evening to all of you i am here to present my research work on the topic of a comparison of hip score and oxford hip score in patient undergoing primary total hip arthroplasty my mentor was professor santosh kumar total hip arthroplasty is one of the most widely performed surgical procedure in orthopedic surgery to relieve the pain and restore the function in the patient with extensively damaged hip joint however 
the patient outcome must be evaluated to know the benefit of the surgery. There are several major presents to assess the outcome of total hepatoplasty out of which patient reported as well as surgeon reported scores are widely used to assess the outcome of THA. In our study, we compare the patient reported score that is Oxford HIP score and the surgeon reported score that is a Harris HIP score. Coming on to Harris HIP score, it was introduced in 1969 for patient undergoing total hepatoplasty for traumatic arthritis of hip after s fracture. There are total 10 items with a maximum score of 100. However, there are certain limitations of uh, Harris HIP score that are uh, as follows. It has a higher ceiling effect of 20% while the accepted is uh, 15%. There is an absence of effect to intervention from the patient pers perspective, which is very important. And it also requires a clinical visit by the patient as well. So this is a Harris HIP score. Coming on to Oxford HIP score, it's a uh, patient reported outcome measure. Which PROMs are increasingly used in assessing orthopedic outcome as they are they correlate best with the satisfaction of the patient with the surgery. Uh, the OHS consists of 12 items, 12 items which uh, has five responses each on a scale of 0 to 4. The score of each item is added, giving an overall score, overall score with a maximum of 48 and minimum of 0. These are the 12 items of OHS. What is the purpose of my study? My study, uh, few studies have earlier, comp earlier compared both OHS and HSS and found OHS to be shorter, site-specific and responsive questionnaire and have least selling effect. However, there are uh, limitations of these studies. None of them have been done in Indian population, first of all. And a study done in 2005 by uh, Kali Raza et al. had longer follow-up period with no baseline data. A study done in 2010 with, by Parson et al have uh, exclusively enrolled the patient undergoing hip resurfacing surgery, which was done, which was, is done for in younger individual. And a study done in 2017 only enrolled the patient of primary osteoarthritis, which is relatively uncommon cause of uh, PHA in our country. So the age indication, physical and uh, physical requirement, as well as the mental expectation of the Indian patient undergoing total hepatoplasty are different from their Western counterpart. So we conduct this study. What are my aims and objectives? Aims to examine the reliability and validity of Oxford score and Harris score. Uh, my objective was to uh, examine the strength of relationship, to measure the internal consistency reliability, that is Cronbeck alpha coefficient, and to calculate the so much decorrelation between both the between common items of both the scores. So, uh, what is internal consistency reliability? That is Cronbeck alpha coefficient. It is an important measurement property of, for questionnaire that intend to measure single underlying concept by using multiple items. A low Cronbeck alpha indicate lack of correlation between the items in the scale, which makes summarizing the items are unjustified. And very high Cronbeck alpha indicate correlation among the item in a scale that is redundancy of one or more item. Coming on to so much decorrelation, it is a it examine the concordance between the common items of both the score. A value of one indicates only concordant pair. A value of zero indicates no uh, relation between the variables and as value of 0.5 indicate 50% pair are concordant and 50 are discordant. What is pair rank, rank correlation coefficient? It is a relationship between two variables. It um, This method measures the strength and direction of the association between the two sets of data. A score of 0.7, more than 0.7 suggests strong relationship, 0.5 to 0.7 suggests moderate relationship and less than 0.5 suggests weak relationship. Uh, what are my inclusion criteria? I have included uh, the follow-up patient of primary total hepatoplasty reporting for follow-up OPD in a period between six months to one year. One year. Exclusion criteria, other hip-related problem on the safe on the contralateral lower limb, patient with a history of undergoing treatment for any other condition likely to affect their physical as well as mental being, and the patient with intellectual disability. Coming on to result of observation, this is my epidemiological data. A total of 33 patients of total hepatoplasty were enrolled with a mean age of 33.21 with a maximum in the age group between 31 to 40 years and most of them were males. That is 75.8. Most common cause for undergoing total hepatoplasty in my study was uh, avascular necrosis of hip. Out of 33, 51% were operated for the right, uh, right side and rest were operated on the left side. Out of 33, 63.6 have been operated by the posterior approach and rest by the lateral approach. And out of 33, there are only 24.2 cemented hepatoplasty and rest were uncemented. This is my total OHS and HHS. My total OHS was 46.79 with a standard deviation of 2.13 and total HHS was 95.97 with a standard deviation of 5.11. Uh, coming on to correlation coefficient, my correlation coefficient came out to be 0.6999. It signifies uh, that there is a good correlation, a strong, rather a strong correlation uh, exists between OHS and HHS. It signifies that we can use both the scores interchangeably without significant loss of data. 
coming on to liability that is crowned by alpha coefficient my, in my study the liability of the ohs is found to be better than hhs coming on to somers decorrelation that are uh, compared between the common items in both the score that is distance limb pain stocks and stairs uh, somers decorrelation range between 0.039 2.554 a minimum concordance is for limp that is 0.039 that means the ratings given by the surgeon and the patient are different and the minimum concordance maximum concordance was given to the stairs that is having almost scoring uh, by the surgeon as well as the patient outcome coming on to the conclusion did study implies that the physical uh, physician assess and the patient assess outcome has significant correlation the good correlation also suggests that the oxford questionnaire which does not require a clinical visit or physical evaluation and had a higher follow up rate could be used more directly to compare the study uh, that used the hhs the hhs is a totally surgeon filled outcome thus causes administrative burden and the ohs on the other hand is a patient reported and yielded similar response rate at the hss ohs is a simple uniform cost effective reliable easy to administer and comparable method for measurement of result of total hepatoplasty thank you everyone presentation sir hello and now yes sir ah it was nice presentation and you established good correlation and uh, definitely we have problem of follow up and uh, so what is the evidence in the international literature sir uh, in international <laughs> corroborate with international study yeah yeah uh, so i can call call it uh, pretty well with the international study however the demand of the patient indians in indian scenario are quite different but the result was a uh, quite uh, comparable with the international study sir okay okay here is uh, hip score on uh, almost is designed for the western population only there we don't yeah. discuss our needs definitely sir so sir. Uh, sir, in ohs uh, you ask about this splitting or something like that or so we have not enrolled any sir uh, any new questions sir because uh, then there will there will be a bias sir so we have only stuck to the main question and that is uh, basic question okay yes sir okay yes. hello good evening sir am i audible yes sir i want to know one one scoring system is pa patient oriented another is surgeon oriented sir sir in both the cases you are being biased if suppose the patient orient uh, surgeon oriented you are, if you are considering it to be biased then why not consider patient oriented also biased so there should be something have you worked out that certain points you take it from harris ip score and certain from export ip score and come out something uh, something for the indian population sir sorry sir did you understand my question yes sir that is what i am trying to find out because you have to have something of a mixture of this you can't just say that the the surgeon oriented was not very good and the patient oriented you proved it to be good there has to be something a balance between these two uh, sir, if you have a... uh, sir? sir the surgeon reported outcome is also sir not uh, a bad score uh, however sir it requires a clinical visit by the patient and uh, also causes causes a sir administrative burden that's why i am sir saying ki prom can be used more directly it can be used over the phone sir also so so in covid 19 period of course it can be used in a better way yes but, sir <laughs> but i think so there should be a combination of both this so <laughs> dr santosh can come up with a new system where they, he can use both these systems sir, sir. i don't know whether so he can design his own system, system as well for the indian patients as well lot of people are doing surgeries with indian demands now it is for but most of process. most of the studies are being uh, done on the basis of rcp score uh, yes, of yes. course less number of studies are with the export but since the pandemic and covid 19 i think the need for patient oriented has come up uh, yes, that's yes. the good paper okay yes, thank you Thank I you. think it's it's a very good argue answer you you just mentioned about the Indian scenario. But do you normally talk to the patient prior to surgery about his expectations before and after the surgery? Has he met the expectations or not? Like for example, squatting is something which will be not possible sometimes. If you tell him what he expects, 
And after the surgery, see, has he achieved that? That you can add on your scores will be very helpful for Indian population. Sir, sir, sir. By counseling the patient, talking before the surgery will be really helpful. Sir. Okay. Thank you, Priyank. It's a nice attempt. Thank you, sir. So Thank our you. next speaker is Dr. Nayank Gautam. Dr. Nayan Gautam. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Start your presentation and please be quick. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, sir, myself, Dr. Nayan Gautam. I'm presenting my uh, topic of an epidemiological study of orthopedic admissions in KGMU Trauma Center and the status of bone specific alkaline phosphatase in these subjects. My chief guide is uh, Professor Arun Sivastav, sir. Introduction. Traumatic orthopedic injuries uh, uh, are very common uh, worldwide. Among them, orthopedic injury constitute a major bulk. Uh, orthopedic injuries constitute of, of uh, injuries of bone, joints, tendon, and muscles, and the nerves. Trauma accounts for 9% 9, 9, 9 of global mortality and poses a threat to healthcare system worldwide. World, World, World Health Organization has estimated 90% of the injuries of uh, to occur in low and middle income countries. Uh, road traffic accidents falls in the top five cause of morbidity and mortality in Southeast Asian countries. Some studies have shown that traumatic injuries due to road traffic accidents uh, uh, is major cause with a prevalence of 63.6% and is followed by fall injuries in second position with a prevalence of 29.4%. The number of fatalities has been steadily increasing with the uh, growth in vehicle population. Uh, even the mortality rate per 1000 vehicle in India is as high as 10.5 compared to less than two in developed countries. One of the major cause, uh, one of the major cause for increasing orthopedic injuries in, uh, oste uh, is osteoporotic bone leading to fracture due to trivial injuries. Approximately 200, per, uh, 200 million people suffer from osteoporosis, and uh, approximately 8.9 uh, 8 million fractures are caused by osteoporotic fractures. Bone-specific alkaline phosphatase is the bone-specific isoform of uh, alkaline phosphatase, a glycoprotein that is found on the surface of the osteoblasts. Bone-specific alkaline phosphatase reflects the biosynthesis synthetic activity of these no bone forming cells. Bone specific alkaline phosphorus has been shown to be a sensitive and rival indicator of bone metabolism. Bone specific alkaline phosphorus is a good biochemical marker for bone formation in different bone diseases and osteoporosis. Bone specific alkaline phosphorus is a good indicator for bone quality. Several studies have suggested that uh, quantification of bone specific alkaline phosphorus in serum may be a superior index for, of bone formation as compared to total alkaline phosphorus. For the enzyme immunoassay, of bone specific alkaline phosphorus, the detection limit, limit is 0 0.7 unit per liter and the mean value is 24.9 uh, <coughs> and 19.7 for men, uh, men and post -menop pre menopausal women, respectively. With osteoporosis, the bone specific alkaline phosphate activity of 66.4 has been detected with a woman aged uh, over 59 years. As an indicator of osteoporotic activity, the measurement of bone specific alkaline phosphatase is applied as the assistance for the management of osteoporosis in the premenopausal and postmenopausal women. Uh, aim and objective of this study was uh, epidemiological study of orthopedic uh, subjects requiring admission in level one trauma center and the assessment of bone specific alkaline phosphatase as a screening tool to detect the underlying metabolic bone disease in these subjects. Uh, this study was conducted was an observational cross-sectional study which uh, was included to 60 orthopedic subjects in the department of orthopedics kgmu over one year the sample size of my study was uh, 260 patients and the it was an observational cross-sectional study we collected 5 ml of blood sample uh, from the uh, patients of age more than 18 year of age uh, for elisa Inclusion criteria, all the polytrauma patient and isolated orthopedic injury patient admitted in an orthopedic emergency unit, duration of injury less than one week and patient given consent of the uh, study. And the exclusion criteria was the duration of injury more than one week and non-traumatic patient, patient who need emergency neurosurgery or trauma surgical intervention and patient not given consent for the surgery. Observation and the results. Uh, the number of patients included in this study was 300 and we found that the highest number of patients were young adults with the calculated mean age of year about uh, uh, was 33.52. 
the young male uh, uh, 84.7% victims were uh, male and the young male tends to involve more in the outdoor activity which could be the reason for the young age and sex difference in this study 60.7% uh, were married pupils and 34.0% uh, was illiterate and 35.3 was graduate pupils in this study we found that 24.7% of the people having uh, alcohol drinking habits in the past or during the driving and 13.3% uh, <coughs> uh, patient was having the comorbidity like hypertension and 11% patient was having the comorbidity of diabetes mellitus and uh, only uh, in our study, we found that only 23.8% patient were using safety measures in the form of helmets and seat belts. In this study, we found that 46% uh, patient was driver and 13% pedestrian and 41% was plane rider or passenger seats. 46.5% uh, patient presented to the hospital within 24 hour or injury. The rest, patient, the rest patients uh, presented with after 24 hours. The delay in the presentation because they were referred from remote areas and delay in transport might be the reason for this. <clears throat> Most common mode of injury in, uh, we found in our study was the road traffic accidents uh, with the 71% followed by the uh, fall from height or fall of heavy object uh, with 16.7% and then slip up on ground or trivial trauma with 7.7%. Uh, distribution of the patient on the basis of the reason in what we found that uh, the lower limb involved the most commonly with a 14.7% patient, 49.7% having the uh, right lower limb injuries. 54.7% uh, was having closed fracture and 337 was having uh, open uh, compound fractures. 10% uh, was patient was having the neurovascular deficit. In, uh, in our center, 77.7% uh, was patient surgically and the 14.7% patient was managed uh, conservatively. In this study, we have taken 258 patients with the age more than 18 years and measured bone specific for uh, alkaline phosphatase level only them uh, as compared within the category and compared with the categories of age group, gender and marital status. We have taken sir, only 18 more than 18 year old peoples because the, 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 below the 18 year the in the growth phase, the bone specific alkaline phosphatase level was uh, already higher. <coughs> We found a significant correlation with uh, bone specific fire, uh, alkaline phosphatase with the age. Uh, it was a linear co uh, correlation uh, the, as the age increases, the uh, bone specific alkaline phosphatase was increased and highest was found after more than 16 years of age with the uh, mean value of 29.67. We found a, a positive correlation between the gender and bone specific alkaline phosphatase as the females uh, were having the higher bone specific uh, uh, alkaline phosphatase uh, with the P value of less than 0 0.05. The religion having uh, uh, no relation with the bone specific uh, bone um, bone specific alkaline phosphatase. Yeah, uh, in this study we found that illiterate pupils, uh, illiterate people were having a, a higher level of bone specific uh, alkaline phosphatase as compared to others, and it was a statistically significant. We found a correlation uh, on the basis of mode of injury. And we found that the slip on ground and trivial trauma was, patient was having higher bone specific alkaline phosphatase level with a mean of 30.88. Pattern of bone involvement was also found uh, correlated, statistically correlated with the uh, bone specific alkaline phosphatase as the hip fracture around the hip fracture, which we include the neck femur uh, fracture and the intertrochanter femur fracture was having, uh, these patients were having higher bone specific alkaline phosphatase level. Uh, we found the comorbidity with the uh, related to the bone specific alkaline phosphatase like uh, diabetes mellitus and the hypertension patient. They, these were having a higher level of bone specific alkaline phosphatase and they were statistically significant. <clears throat> Lenesen et al. conducted a cross-sectional study to determine the optimal predictor and cutoff point of uh, for bone-specific alkaline phosphatase, and that they found that when bone-specific alkaline phosphatase level was more than 22 nanogram per ml, all the subjects have mild or moderate form of the bone turnover features. Uh, 
and the source that be is uh, bone specific alkaline phosphate is shown to be a optimal predictor of biopsy finding with an optimal cutoff of more than 22 nanogram per new, uh, per liter in our study we have uh, we uh, there was a total of uh, 31 uh, patient that is 21 12% patients whose bone specific uh, alkaline phosphatases were more than 22 with a mean of 32.86 among them 14 were females with a mean of 39.94 and the 17 were males with a mean of uh, 27 the association of mean bone specific alkaline phosphate of these patient were found to be statistically significant among them 15 uh, uh, among them I 14 am... were fe- yes sir please be quick yes sir was uh, just finishing in two slides sir among them 14 were female with a mean age was 65.93 and 17 were male with a mean age of 60.59 <clears throat> conclusion the highest number of patient were young adult male uh, road traffic accident is the most common uh, mode of injury with 171.3 was followed by the fall from height Uh, only 28.23.8% uh, uh, patient was moving uh, were using uh, safety measures and the 12% patient were having a uh, 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 abnormally high level of bone specific alkaline phosphate is and the limitation of the study was because of due to time strain this study comprises relatively smaller number of uh, population hence there was a further evolution of bone specific alkaline phosphate and trauma patients is needed thank you sir thank you nank very informative theoretically very informative paper so any questions uh, i would like to ask him one thing uh, uh, he has said that uh, dura- whether is this alkaline phosphate is also related with duration of trauma no sir not with the duration yes uh, actually oh. sir uh, bone specific fall uh, alkaline phosphate is the marker of bone formation if the duration of trauma more than 7 days then it start automatically begin uh, becoming raising as the osteoblastic activity is increased during the uh, union sir so That's why, why have we excluded that from your study you could have calculated that also whether uh, uh, whether one week in, within one week the how much was the alkaline phosphate is and even after one week What what was the criteria for excluding that? Actually, sir, we were looking for the patient having uh, already having underlying metabolic bone diseases, sir. That's why we not included that patients because if we included them, then then the, the bone specific uh, alkaline phosphatases will be higher in all these patients, sir. Once the union And begins. In your presentation, you have not shown your discussion part. That is missing. That is an important thing because you have shown certain uh, p value of significance on many of the things. Like suppose you say that the, the in literate literate patient you found that the uh, alkaline phosphate level was higher. Yes. Is it so? So why was it higher in lit? What does literacy and illiteracy has to do with alkaline phosphate? You should have explained that. Uh, sir, actually, sir, illiterate people mostly were from the rural areas, and there was uh, uh, maybe um, there will be a vitamin D deficiency or in rural area. people they have more vitamin D. They are more exposed to sunlight than as compared to the urban areas. Yes, sir. And that has to be means it has to be compared with other studies. Your discussion part is completely missing. That is what I want to say in this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nayan. thank you sir so thank now you. we move on to our next speaker dr pranjal gupta pranjal are you there yes sir so start your presentation and uh, i request you to summarize this quickly yes Am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. So, topic of my presentation is anatomical variation in quadriceps angles with regard to different anthropometric parameters in a tertiary case center in northern India. The quadriceps angle is formed between quadriceps muscles and the patellar tendon, and is clinically very important parameter which displays biomechanical effect of quadriceps muscle on the knee, and is also regarded a crucial factor for the proper posture and the movement of patina. The literature of the document uh, uh, values of Q angle by different researcher varies. It is well appreciated that the normal Q angle should fall between 10 to 20 degrees. The males are mostly at the lower end of this range, while the females tend to have higher ones. 
the quadriceps angle is intended to provide some indication of net lateral force applied to patellofemoral joint by the contraction of quadriceps as this lateral force is supposed to be related to the development of various patellofemoral pathologies the q angle has been reported as a principal component of the there is loss of sound it seems pranjal you are not audible dr pranjal he is also not hearing it i think so we have lost his link hello sir am i audible now now audible yeah now you are Uh, uh sir is my screen visible it's visible yeah. now start introduction yes, slide is visible sir am i uh, visible now yes 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 you are audible and your slide is visible so the quadriceps angle is intended to provide some indication of net lateral force applied to patellofemoral joint by the contraction of quadriceps as this lateral force is supposed to be related to the development of various patellofemoral pathologies The Q angle has been reported to uh, as a useful component in the uh, clinical assessment of painful patellofemoral joint. Uh, an excessive Q angle implies tendency of further biomechanical stress during uh, continual activities using the knee because it interferes with the smooth movement of patella in the femoral group. Over the progress of time, notably with the sport activities, it will cause a muscle imbalance and ultimately wearing away of the cartilage uh, on the under surface of patella, which can be translated into losing of articular uh, losing of the articular surface of the knee. an increase in quadriceps angle is recognized as suggestive of extensive mechanism misalignment and can be precursor of uh, overuse injuries and has been correlated to the patellofemoral pain syndrome hypermobile knee joint chondromalacia patelli recurrent subluxation of patella and a tears of anterior cruciate ligament the aims of this study was to establish the range of q angle in uh, healthy adults of northern india and to evaluate the variation in q angle with age gender height dominant side female length and bicondylar distance in of femur This cross-section study was conducted in the Department of Orthopedics, uh, King George Medical University, Lucknow, after the approval of uh, Ethics Con Committee. The duration of the study was one year, and the population taken for the study were healthy adults, and sample size was hundred. Exclusion criteria of my study was individuals with uh, any uh, injury to lower limb that leads to ligamentous or muscular or bony defects, uh, individuals with any uh, spinal or neurological injury. Individuals with uh, diagnosed knee disorder like fracture, acute or chronic knee pain, dislocation of patella, and the subject with prior orthopedic injury at lower extremities. Uh, the procedure was explained to the subject with a consent, and a consent was taken. In addition, a brief description of the procedure was demonstrated to make it familiar to the subject after recording their age, gender, weight, height, and dominant side on a specific uh, investigation paper sheet. The single in investigator took the measurement to obscure uh, observer bias. the measurement was done bilaterally in all subjects with the subject in supine position and big toes touching each other for measurement of q angle using a marker pen three points were marked anterior superior iliac spine center of patella and the tibial tuberosity the borders for pat uh, patella were palpated and its center was identified the center of patella was marked at the point of intersection of maximum vertical and transfer diameter of patella center of tibial tuberosity was marked at the point of maximum uh, protuberance two lines were drawn from anterior superior iliac spine to the center of patella and from the center of patella to center of tibial tuberosity a fulcrum of the goniometer was placed at the center of patella and one arm was directed towards tibial tuberosity and the other arm was uh, was along the anterior superior iliac spine q angle in degrees was thus measured on both the sides a manual caliper uh, scaled from 0 to 30 cm with marginal error of 0.1 mm was used to uh, measure the bicondylar distance of the femur on both the sides on each volunteer a stretchable measuring tape was used to measure the femur length the subject was first made to lie supine in an anatomical position with feet uh, facing each other and big toes touching each other the length uh, was me measured from uh, greater to canter to lateral epicondylar femur uh, the total 100 uh, a total of 100 subjects was selected for the study of which 50% were male and 50 were females the left and left uh, left and right dominant sided were in proportion of 9% and 91% respectively the mean q angle in our study of males was found to be 11.14 degrees on right side and 10.84 on left sides 
in females it was found to be uh, 13.68 on right side and 13.61 degrees on left side there was uh, there was significant differences between male and female q angles on both left and right sides among male right q angle and the left q angle both showed significant positive correlation with height weight uh, bmi right female length left female length right bicondylar distance and left bicondylar distance the highest correlation was found with weight and bmi among females the right q angle showed significant positive correlation with weight and bmi the highest correlation was found with weight the left q angle showed significant po uh, positive correlations with weight bmi right female length and left female length and the highest correlation was found with weight on comparing the values of q angle with dominant side we found no sta uh, statistical significant differences thank you sir sir am i audible yes you are yeah you are Pranjal. audible thank you pranjal no, no, no. so any questions you measured the regarding you this? measured the q angle while the patient was supine yes sir, the, not the patient was them? supine while and the patient uh, was standing no sir the patient was supine so once you are measuring the quadriceps pull yes sir okay and once yes, the patient is comfortably lying supine so is it correct Hello, uh, sorry, sir. Uh, so, really, you should have measured the Q angle while the patient was standing. That would have better given you the anti gravity. Uh, you are uh, measuring the pull of the quadriceps muscle, and while yes, once the patient is lying down, then this muscle is relaxed. Uh, yes, sir, it is. So, <laughs> anyway, that is a procedural mistake. What I see, said what? What was your conclusion? I was just. Hello, sir. Uh, conclusion of the study was that uh, there is significant uh, vital differences in uh, male and female Q angles, and the Q angle is positively correlated with uh, weight, uh, height, and uh, BMI on both the sides. Okay. okay. Hello. Hello. Yes, I am yes. just trying to find out whether uh, once you have done your study, you have to have a discussion and you have to have comparison with other studies. What, what, uh, what is the normal yes. in world literature? What is the finding? You have not compared with those whether male yes, and females sir. are normally they do have a different Q angles or not. Uh, yes, sir. The other studies uh, show similar result. But that has uh, to be included in your uh, presentation. Uh, that yes, is sir, a sorry, discussion is a very important part of presentation and what 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 has means what is the basic what, what does the world literature says and what what is your result that has to be compared that part is missing from your presentation right sir so I'll okay take care for in future thank you thank you sir with this we move on to our next speaker Dr. Dharmendra Kumar. Yes, sir. Okay, Dharmendra. Start your presentation. Yes, sir. And please be quick. Okay, sir. So, myself, Dr. Dharmendra Kumar from KGMU. So, our topic is a prospective study to allow the role of span corner to remove decompression. Decompression in the traumatic spinal injury. Our chief guide is Professor Ashish Kumar, Ms. GNB from KGMU, and the guardians of Professor uh, Dr. Sanjeev Kumar. Go ahead. Traumatic spinal cord injury is a tragic event that has a major uh, impact on the individual and society as well as healthcare system. Acute spinal cord injury involves a combination of primary mechanical and secondary cellular injury, leading to a neural tissue destruction. Primary mechanism refers to the initial rapid spinal cord compression, uh, compression and trauma induced by a fracture or setting forces. Primary trauma to the cord is irre irreversible and in initiate a cascade of pathological and molecular changes that contribute to secondary injury. Secondary injury mechanism include hemorrhage, vessel spasm, ischemia, edema, excited toxicity, inflammation, and apoptosis. Surgical intervention has been explored as a potential treatment method. Surgery in acute spinal cord injury uh, serves to decompress the spinal cord and restore spinal stability, thus reducing the secondary injury. Different types of decompress, uh, decompression surgical procedure exist such as laminotomy, laminotomy, 
decompression of the spinal column can be done via anterior posterior lateral or posterior approach the purpose of our study to evaluate the neurological outcome in the patients of traumatic spinal cord injury operated with the vertebral fracture fixation by pedicle screw and rod system and other operated by uh, vertebral fracture fixation with pedicle screw system and decompression via via laminectomy the aims uh, of the my the aims of my uh, study was does spinal cord compression help in the neurological recovery in cases of traumatic thoracolumbar paraplegia patients our study was conducted in department of orthopedic surgery king george medical university our study was uh, approved by the ethical committee of the kgmu uh, total of 14 cases was uh, taken in our study with one year follow up inclusion criteria uh, we have taken a uh, patient more than 18 years and all cases of traumatic paraplegia complete with fracture of the thoracolumbar vertebra involving d8 to l3 vertebra fracture involving one or maximally two continuous vertebra but not more than two all thoracolumbar stable fracture as per eu classification and all cases of complete traumatic paraplegia less than 3 weeks of duration of the injury we exclude the patients with the traumatic paraplegia with complete for transection and multi level non contiguous vertebra fracture with paraplegia vertebral fracture with stable fracture pattern as per eu classification all uh, all cases of complete traumatic paraplegia more than 3 weeks of duration of injury patient not willing for surgery and fit for surgery and not willing for regular follow up are excluded in observation total 14 patient were uh, included as per inclusion criteria patient were divided in two group a and b out of 14 cases 20 were, uh, 26 patient were assigned for group a while 14 patient were uh, assigned for group b by randomization group a will include the patient of thoracolumbar traumatic paraplegia complete with fracture and fracture dislocation of the thoracolumbar vertebra involving d8 to l3 uh, treated by fixation with pedicle screw and rod system in group b we include the patient of thoracolumbar traumatic paraplegia complete with fracture and fracture dislocation of thoracolumbar vertebra involving d8 to l3 uh, treated by fixation with pedicle screw and decompression of the spinal cord via laminectomy the observation results of uh, study are as follows in one year follow uh, we uh, at the time of admission uh, in total 14 patient there is a grade a asia score at post of in group a there is 26 patient in uh, grade a uh, and in group b 12 patients at the in group b uh, one patient improved from uh, grade a to grade b and one patient improved from grade a to grade c in group uh, in group a there is no improvement as such at the three month there is one patient improved from grade a to grade b while the same results in the group b same results are found us at 6 month and 1 year the study has 14 cases in which mean age group was in group a was 34.09 and mean age in the group b was 26.71 the mean age was significantly higher in group b as compared to group a in group a males were 69.2% and female were 30.8% while in group b males were 71.4% and females were 28.6% in terms of mode of injury a majority of the cases were fall from height which are 60% followed by rotator cuff accident 17.5% rest by the others mode of injury in our study at the time of admission neurological assessment was done by uh, uh, on the basis of aci classification aci a grade were found in all the cases of both groups at post op the a grade level found in all the cases of group a and 85.7% are group b two cases of group b improved aci a to b and one improved from aci a to c in group a at three month the minor shifting improved grade a to grade b which is seen only in one patient the same results were found in the six month and one year our study shows that the surgical decompression was not effective in terms of neurological improvement in the setting of complete uh, thoracic spinal cord injury the post operative neurological state of the two groups did not vary significantly only a few selected patients with complete neurological uh, deficit benefited from the surgery our study shows that in case of complete thoracic spinal injury there was no correlation between spinal cord decompression and motor improvement in one patient of group b recovered from asia a to c which was uh, significant but uh, but not a functional power and there is only sensory recovery in the group a thank you
थैंक यू धर्मेन एनी क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग दिस पेपर धर्मेन just tell me yes, how have you randomized your study you said it's a randomized study and which yes, process of randomization have you followed because in uh, one group you are getting 26 patient and in another group you are getting 14 patient in randomization sir, this much uh, difference does not occur system. pardon sir computer generated such system through survey randomized the patient so no which process in computer usually the difference does not occur between 26 and 14 Yes, Randomization may have uh, some two or three, four, five difference, but it cannot be of the level of uh, this five. much. Yes. Maybe uh, different units they follow different procedure. That is another uh, issue. But uh, usually, once you are randomizing it, the difference does not occur like this. So that in one group you will have twenty six patients, and in another group you will have fourteen patients. Uh, it's more than twenty five percent. Usually, it's five to ten percent. No? Yes. चलो कोई बात नहीं. Next, I think so. Okay, thank you, Dharmin. Yes, thank you, sir. So our next speaker is Dr. Muhammad Shahid Zada. Yes, sir. Okay, Shahid, start your presentation. Yes, sir. and again i am requesting you to be fast okay sir thank you <clears throat> so my screen is visible sir yeah it's visible Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Sir, am I visible, sir? You are visible and you are audible. Thank you, sir. so my topic is to analyze the role of oral alen donate on clinical radiological short term outcome of leg colvus pathis disease leg colvus pathis disease is an idiopathic juvenile avascular <coughs> necrosis of femoral head in skeletally immature patient the children it is childhood disorder in which the blood flow to the femoral head is momentarily cut off causing the bone to die the bone dies and is stopped developing as the blood vessels around head disappear and the cell dies fresh blood vessels begin to extract shahid <clears throat> your slide is not moving it is stuck up in your first slide so introduction part are visible no it's on your first slide which is visible <laughs> Sir, uh, uh, now visible, sir. It's still visible, but first slide only. It's not moving to the next slide. Can I continue, sir? Sir, correction. Muhammad, you go back and uh, reshare it. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Say it. So not visible, sir. It's not visible. Now it's visible. Okay, sir. <clears throat> But it's only first slide. So there is some technical. So. Any question, sir? So now into introduction. Yes. Now it's visible. Okay, sir. So leg colvus pathis disease an idiopathic juvenile avascular necrosis of the femoral head in skeletally immature patient it is a childhood disorder in which the blood flow to the femoral head is momentarily cut off causing the bone to die the bone dies and is stopped developing as the blood vessels around the femoral head disappear and cells die 
fresh blood vessel begin to extract the dead bone as the healing process progress this causes the loss of bone mass and a weakening of the femoral head it causes bone deformity when new tissue and bone replace the necrotic tissue bisphosphonates are the class of drug that prevent bone resorption by inhibiting osteoclast activities the use of bisphosphonate therapy in pediatric patient was suggested in 1998 when the cyclic administration of intravenous pamidronate in children with osteogenesis imperfecta resulted in reduction in bone resorption increased bone density and reduction in the fracture incidence Elendronate is a nitrogen containing bisphosphonate which bind to bone surface and inhibit bone resorption by osteoclast. Bisphosphonate are generally well tolerated in pediatric patient adverse effect are limited and uh, are predictable based on the previous trials. In most cases acute phase reaction is observed with fever, malaise, abdominal pain with initiation of either intravenous or oral agent within 1 to 3 days and lasting for few days. More serious side effects seen in adults including uveitis, thrombocytopenia, esophageal or oral ulceration rare in children osteonecrosis of just seen in adults are not seen in pediatric patient aims and objective to analyze the role of oral elendronate in human function short term outcome and quality of life at the end of one year to study the role of oral oral elendronate at radiological short term outcome in children with unilateral perthes disease the study will carried out in the department of orthopedic skinjal medical university the Study design is cohort study and is prospective open ended study. Twelve month follow up and sample size is thirty six. Inclusion criteria: patient less than eighteen year of age of either sex with unilateral idiopathic painless limb diagnosed to be Parkinson's disease based on the clinical and the radiological picture and willing to participate in the study. Patient previously operated is excluded. Patient where previously collapsed hip due to some other pathology. Patient diagnosed to be a case of transient synovitis of hip. Sequelae of septic arthritis, SCFE, a child suffering from muscular dystrophy. Patient with bilateral hip pathology, patient not willing to be participate in the study. Methodology: total thirty six patient were with unilateral painless limb included as per the inclusion exclusion criteria will be evaluated as per the history, clinical examination, and the radiological picture done at the time of initial presentation. The lateral pillar classification system will be used to classify disease type on X-ray, pelvis, both hip, AP view. Patient will be divided into two group. Uh, group one containing patient less than eight year of age. Group two a patient above eight year of age fulfilling the inclusion criteria. Both the group will be further divided randomly into group subgroup A, subgroup B. Subgroup A will receive standard treatment as per the protocol. while subgroup b will given oral elendronate along with the standard treatment protocol in order to improve, improve containment of femoral head virus derotation or steotomy were done in patient above 8 year of age to improve the contour in less than 8 year of age patient were given oral elendronate 5 mg per day for children uh, less than 40 kg and 10 mg per day for children above 40 kg for total duration of 1 year All patient with unilateral painless limb included as per inclusion exclusion criteria. Uh, patient suffering from unilateral perthes disease will be included. These are divided into two group: group one, group two. Group one, age less than eight year. Sir, I am I am audible, sir. Yes, you are audible. Continue. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, and group two, age more than eight year. Now, uh, these group are randomly divided in subgroup A and B. Subgroup A given standard treatment and subgroup B given standard treatment along with the oral elendronate and follow the patient. Standard treatment for patient of less than eight year, we use broomstick or abduction brace, calcium, vitamin D three, cordyceps drill, symptomatic treatment and physiotherapy. And patient of age more than eight year, all these standard treatment include and virus derotation or steotomy will done. Assessment tool, clinical assessment. We do clinical assessment on the basis of shortening, range of motion, trend in the gait, Harris CT score, and radiological assessment we do X-ray, pelvis, both hip, AP, on the basis of lateral classification. Observation and result. On comparing the treatment and follow-up, uh, shortening in limb patient followed prospectively. It was found that before treatment, mean shortening was done in group one A and one B, and uh, the shortening in group two A and two B were improved gradually. However, the difference was striking and insignificant. On comparing range of motion within group one and group two, the insignificant difference among the them is recorded, except significant for abduction and internal rotation. 
the gate was present and absence in group 1 is 5 5 and uh, in uh, group 1b is 2 8 with an insignificant difference among them similarly the gate present and absence in group 2a is 6 2 and uh, in group 2b is 1 and 7 with a significant difference among them how is the score in the patient uh, after 12 month follow up Uh, found that the mean Harris Ibis score in group one A was fifty four point three four plus minus three point seven six and group one B was fifty eight point four three plus minus three point three six. However, in group two, mean Harris Ibis score is group two A was fifty five point one zero one plus minus three point seven two and group two B was fifty nine point zero four plus minus three point nine five. Significant difference was observed. The Herring letter to classification system in subgroup A, B, C in group one A is six four zero and group one B is ten zero zero, with the significant difference among them. And in group two A is three two and seven, and for group two B is five three and zero, with the same significant difference among them. Conclusion: Under clinical and neurological assessment, we observed that the, there is a significant difference in group one B and two B. Uh, treated with the, along with the oral elantronate with the standard treatment this show the efficacy of oral elantronate over the parthes and open new treatment modalities there is no sufficient long term efficacy and safety data for first this first one at therapy in pediatric age group have a short term use appear to improve the bone density other basic science and clinical studies are required to determine the efficacy and safety of bisphosphonate treatment in leg calves parthes disease emphasizing the potential del deleterious effect on necrotic bone remodeling and the remainder of the growing skeleton thank you sir thank you shahid so as we are running short of time so any question one or two is there is there uh, was there any effect on the rate of union yes once you use this cylinder yes. net in pediatric patients where you perform surgery uh, no sir uh, we not uh, Evaluate any uh, effect of union, sir. No, no. Well, you have done the various the rotation or shot me. Yes, sir. So whether there was any impact on the uh, uh, rate of union in those cases where you have done and uh, given treatment or not? No, sir. Uh, it also suppresses the uh, union process. No, sir. No, sir. Hmm. Okay, then it is significant, and you should report it. So it doesn't affect the uh, rate of union. No, I think so. They have not studied that part. I think so that part is missing. That he should have studied that. How how much is the effect of uh, alendronate on union? But I think so. He's he has not included that in his study. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I think so. Thank you, Shahid. Call the next speaker. Yes, so here we are having our last speaker, Doctor Devang Ganesh from. AMU a leader good evening sir sir may i audible so go ahead with your presentation the slide is visible, is visible and you are audible okay sir thank you sir good evening to all myself ganesh i am here to present my thesis topic a comparative study of internal fixation with tens versus kyr for femoral diaphyseal fracture in children my uh, under guidance of professor madhur abbas sir department of orthopedic surgery jain medical college aligarh under co guidance of dr yasi salam siddiqui sir assistant professor of Uh, department of orthopedic surgery jain medical college coming to introduction femoral shaft fracture are one of the most uh, pediatric injuries most common pediatric injuries incidence of 20 to 25 lakhs children per year uh, recently there has been growing trends towards fixation of this fact uh, this fracture using methods like uh, external fixator a uh, bridge plating and intramedullary uh, nailing with rigid or flexible nail in both tens versus kyr fixation micromodulus ji sir your slides are not running only first slide is visible after that no nothing is there uh, one minute sir so now i uh, visible sir yeah uh, uh, in both tens versus k wire fixation micro motion comfort by the elasticity of fixation promotes faster external bridging callus formation being close procedure there is no disturbance of fracture hematoma so less risk of infection coming to aims and objective of my study Uh, to determine the demography of pediatric diaphyseal fracture of femur to study the advantage and disadvantage of tens and uh, versus kyr in fixation of pediatric diaphyseal fracture of in femur to compare the union rates and functional outcome between these two method and to compare the complications of these two methods 
material and methods um, studies compa comparative prospective study uh, conducted uh, at uh, department of orthopedic surgery jain medical college aligarh amu uh, between november 2019 uh, to november 2021 the study population is uh, all patient presenting with femoral diaphyseal fracture to jain medical college uh, and hospital and opd and uh, emergency in my study total number of uh, patients are 34 I divided into two groups. Uh, there are 38 patients were included in the study, but four patients from the group two, that is KY group, are uh, last of follow-up. So finally, group one uh, consists of 20 patients, and uh, group two consists of 14 patients, a total of 34. Uh, inclusion criteria of my study: children uh, from the age of five to 14 years of the age with femoral diaphyseal fracture, and children with clo com closed or compound fractures, grade one and grade two. exclusion criteria is a patient less than 5 years or more than 14 years are excluded metaphyseal fractures and pathological fractures and patient not willing for surgery follow up a follow up will be done every 4 weeks after the removal of suture on 12th day full weight bearing work will be started at clinical radiological union at each visit clinical radiological evaluation will be done and result will be evaluated using flins and antonis radiological criteria Uh, these are uh, flint and antonin uh, radiological criteria coming to observation and results uh, coming to age distribution in tens group the mean age is 9.391 years that is range between 6 to 13 years in group in kyr group mean age is 9.937 years that range between 6 to 14 years the overall mean age is 9.615 years that is range between 6 to 14 years a majority of patient in my study is uh, age group between 6 to 8 years Uh, coming to site of fracture distribution proximal uh, fractures uh, pro uh, mid one third fractures are more common in my study that consists of a uh, 61.7% a uh, mode of injury a uh, uh, road traffic accident is most common mechanism of injury in my in my study pattern of fractures a uh, transverse fracture is most common uh, fracture in my study that consists of 58.84% uh, percent of uh, patients uh, in 97.3 percent of patient uh, underwent close reduction and 2.70 uh, patients are underwent open reduction in my study a duration of hospital stay uh, majority of patients that is 61.7 percent uh, the majority of uh, the duration of hospital stay is 2 to 3 days and the mean um, the mean duration of hospital stay in the tens group is 3.47 that is range between 2 to 6 days and in kyr group 3.47 uh, range between 2 to 6 days the overall mean duration is 3 to 4 days 3.46 days a p value is 0.958 not significant a duration of procedure in tens group the majority of patient underwent uh, the duration between 61 to 70 minutes that is consist of 45% in kyr group 42.8% uh, of patient that is uh, underwent between the duration of 71 to 80 uh, minutes and the mean duration of procedure is uh, group 1 the tens group consists of 69.130 minutes that uh, range between 50 to 100 and group 2 uh, 78.75 minutes uh, range between 60 to 100 minutes the overall average time taken for uh, taken is 87.60 minutes the range between 50 to 100 minutes the p value is 0.009 which is significant in my study a duration of fracture union the majority of fractures are united uh, and between 8 uh, 8 weeks in my study all 34 cases are achieved in union uh, there is no non union in my study a limb length discrepancy 16 patients in tens and 10 patients in kyr uh, are no a limb length discrepancies and 2 2 cm of shortening seen in one patient in each in my group a uh, flint criteria the total uh, 12 patients in tens group and 8 patients in kyr group are uh, achieved uh, under excellent result and successful result in 6 uh, in tens and 5 in uh, ky and coming to complication there is pain at the entry site seen in uh, six patient in tens group and four patients in ky group there is zero patient uh, superficial infection deep infection and non union seen in both study in both groups and uh, in limb length discrepancies of uh, four patients in each group coming to discussion i compare my study to Uh, Sanjeev et al. Comparative study between tens and kyr and uh, Ishik et al. Comparative study between tens and kyr. My uh, total patients are comparable with Ishik et al. Study. 
and mean age is uh, comparable with Aishi Ketala and Rajesh Govindaswamy study. And uh, the uh, most common uh, mode of injury is uh, road traffic accident in all of the above studies. And the mean operative time is uh, less in tense group compared to KY. It is uh, comparable with Sanjeev et al. study. And hospital duration is 3.47 days. This is comparable with Sanjeev et al. and uh, Ishi et al. study. The union time is uh, uh, comparable with uh, Rajesh Govind Swami and Shagar et al. That is nine, nine weeks of duration. And uh, limb length discrepancy is four patient in uh, both groups. It's comparable with Ishi et al. study. In overall, uh, the results, uh, 20 patients uh, uh, get excellent result and uh, 11 patients successful results and three patients are poor results according to Flynn's criteria. A discussion, surgical management of diaphyseal fracture in uh, female children is mid, uh, intramedular nailing by using TENS or k is a simple effective provide early mobilization in patient with rapid union. We compare the result of both techniques. We observe that there is no difference in the term of union and partial and total weight bearing and hospital stay. The major differentiating feature of both groups in the duration of surgery is less intense group and then the KY. And cost of the treatment in both group as differentiating feature, that is cost is high intense group than KY group. Conclusion, after looking the result of present study and economical aspect of uh, treatment option, we include that KY is uh, technique is provide cost effective treatment option with equally good result as tens. In develop, uh, developing countries like ours, a close intramedullary KY wiring may provide a good option for the, those patients who opt for conservative treatment due to lack of adequate financial resource. Limitation of my studies, limited number of uh, patients in my study, difference in number of uh, patients in between two groups, and poor follow up patient due to COVID uh, pandemic, uh, COVID 19 pandemic, and different consultant and training surgeons. Uh, these are my case exhibits. Uh, tense, uh, and the patient get full range of motion. And this is KVR, a pre-op, post-op, and eight weeks. And patient get full range of uh, motion. And this is second case. And this is third case. And complication, there is hardware prominence in both groups. There is a uh, and knee stiffness in one of my patients. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Ganesh. Thank you. So any questions regarding this paper? Dr. No. Ganesh, how many patients uh, in your study were uh, closed reduction failed and you had to do an open reduction? And did it affect the uh, timing of fracture healing? And does your study become biased once you include those patients with open reduction? There is uh, no difference in union, sir. But there is a difference in uh, duration of procedure. When we do no, open... No. For open reduction, you, you say that there is no difference in union time. Yes, sir. This is uh, not possible. In open, once you do an open reduction... Uh, they, there is that, a loss of a hematoma. Uh, um, maybe your patients were very small so that it did not uh, one, affect... One, the only time. one patient mm -hmm. in my uh, studies uh, underwent open reduction, sir. Okay. So, Oh, okay, Ganesh. Thank you. Uh, I have one query. Yes. Uh, I think you did all your cases under Siam control. Yes, sir. So whether you did them uh, with percutaneous approach or... Per we done with percutaneous approach, sir. Okay. So you have shown that you have taken mean time 78.9 minutes. Yes, sir. So don't you think it's uh, a bit high? Mm, yes. Maybe at your standards. Because you you are doing a simple uh, tense nail or K wiring that too under CRM control with all facilities. Okay. And uh, your mean stay of hospital is also 3.8 days. A procedure you are doing percutaneously. Yes, Staying patient for three days is a little bit higher. In, uh, uh, for wound inspection, we done in the second or third day. So, uh, a hospital okay. stays. Uh, One more query. In your cases, you 
you keep your rash nail and out uh, that your tense nail and out of the skin or you have buried it inside buried inside uh, the uh, under the skin sir not so, left outside of the skin can't we keep them out of the skin sir if we keep them out it irritate the uh, that uh, skin over that so a patient have knee stiffness and, uh, and chances of infection will be more regarding this yes, if we keep it out chances of irritation of skin and pain is zero because nothing is there to tend that is my that is what uh, i feel okay. and i have seen no, in it, my practice usually yes. it is buried inside the skin as well as in the bone little yes. bit in the bone so that nothing irritates there yes but if you leave it outside the chances oh. of infection is very high sir uh, it's all right but because you are doing it in a very uh, young age so most of the time we take it out after 6 weeks no that is okay that is okay means it doesn't matter much but uh, once you bury it inside the bone because in our patients some of the patient do not come even oh, for years and years and uh, may, maybe they uh, they will lost to follow up or they do not come up for removal also in in uh, and, and then then it's very difficult to remove um, yes. but but you can take it out that's not that, a problem that is why we have started leaving them outside because so the nail is protruding out or tense nail or ke wire is protruding out he will have to come okay or it will come out on its own <laughs> उसे आना ही पड़ेगा सर अदरवाइज तो क्या है वो ठीक हो जाता है मस्त हो जाता है सही बात है और एक और इट्स अ वेरी कॉमन टॉपिक एंड यू हैव टेकन जस्ट ट्वेंटी केसेस एंड इन एम यू यू हैव सो मेनी केसेस यू कैन डू दिस वाज डन थर्टी केसेस इन इन टू थ्री मंथ्स यार Um, after my alerting my thesis uh, in in the march ek, we get uh, covid ek ed mein yaar teen teen char char cases ho jate hain yaar covid ki wajah se pura hospital jo hai 6 mahina to band hi raha hai yes sir due to uh, somehow sir humne apni ot ko continue kiya tha agra mein ne hum log ke yahan band ho gaya tha beech mein sir hum logon ne up mein maximum cases operate kiye the हम लोग का काफी बंद हो गया था एज पर द गवर्नमेंट ऑर्डर गणेश मजराबार सर को मेरा आ, नमस्ते कहना भाई जी सर जी बिल्कुल विद दिस वी एंड आवर थर्ड सेशन एंड द लास्ट सेशन ऑफ दिस यूपी ई पी जी कॉन सो आई सिंसियरली थैंक्स आवर चेयरपर्सन डॉक्टर नजमुल हुदा डॉक्टर पवन प्रधान सर एंड डॉक्टर अशोक यादव and uh, our moderators dr nayar asif sir dr amit sharaf and dr kartik puri do kartik puri and amit sharaf is not there and uh, nayar bhai again it's always pleasure to work under your uh, old registrar even after 20 years uh, dr vijay thank you dr vijay it was wonderful and i think so it was a well organized program and there was no technical hitch from your side from your organizer side and i would like to thank your chairman dr paul and all his team for wonderful arrangement and uh, of course it was a good learning program for the post graduates and also we have also heard all those theses and presentations of different colleges and it has been a good learning for us as well so i thank you once again dr bijesh and thank convey you, my thank regards you, and, best wishes and thank to you dr. Papa, sir yes thank you thank you it was nice nice presentations we enjoyed okay good night sir bhaiya pawan bye bye thank you ashish sir thank you no ha bhaiji the one more aap de di aap okay 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 sir thank you ashish and okay. thank you everyone bye bye acha boss bye okay good night good night good night good night hamara kam ho gaya bhaiya ha अंत तो कत्वा चल भैया मैंने तो दोनों बंद कर दिए